about to enter its fifth year. And that's all thanks to you. If you're new here, let me fill you in. Xbox Era is a platform for the Xbox community with best-in-class forums, a kick-ass Discord server, and of course, XboxEra.com, chock full of the latest news, reviews, and more, all focused on your favorite platform, Xbox. It's every Xbox fan's gateway to the best of Xbox Era. Our incredible podcasts listened to in over 50 countries across the planet, our own digital store for games and codes, our merch store for the coolest of Xbox threads, and of course, Day One, where you can track, rate, and discuss your favorite games on Xbox Game Pass. Xbox Era is built for you, and it's completely funded by you. If you value having a publication truly focused on your preferred place to play, you can support us directly via Patreon. Just head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era. You get cool swag and awesome perks, and we get to keep doing what we do. Become a part of the best Xbox community on the internet and help us build the next five years of Xbox Era. Thank you for your support. Despite the fact that the team running Xbox Era haven't been to journalism school, we're still lucky enough to be supported by some incredible people. While we adore all of our patrons, we have to give a very special shout out to our executive producers who go above and beyond for this team, allowing us to achieve so much more than we could without them. Assassin Entertainment, Croat56, Jordan White, Kevin S, Corkenstein, Not Jack, Top and Torn Raptor. You guys are fucking awesome and we love you. If you want to become legend like this lot, head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox era. Hello friends and welcome to episode 208 of the Xbox era podcast. We're here to talk about all of the latest and greatest in gaming news, but overall we're focused on your favorite platform, Xbox. If you love what we do, you can support us directly by heading to patreon.com forward slash Xbox era or by becoming a YouTube member right here. As always, keep your eyes peeled on xboxera.com for all the latest and greatest in gaming Xbox news. I am joined as always by the wonderful special Nick. What's going on? <laughs> and joining me as well is uh, Jesse, the backbone of everything that we do outside of pre-drag. How are you doing, Jesse? I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little worn down. A little really. worn down by the. I'm doing pretty good for the dramas. No, it was, the we dramas. have. It's been good. It's been good times. We've been. We've got between myself and Nick. We've got four reviews going live next week. Nick had a, a month for his one, and he he got it done. We're very proud of him. Round of applause for Nick. Woo! <laughs> Zang! <laughs> so yeah, lo lots of content coming. Um, then it really slows uh. down. There's just nothing coming out until Little Kitty Big City on the 9th of May, and then Hellblade. And then there's maybe a couple more things in May, but it's it's very slow. So we'll have... We'll sneak some stuff in. We have ideas on things to do, and it's exciting you to work on. Yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna come up with some some big things uh, to keep us all entertained. As more we alien versus biggest... predator from you. Yeah, well, hopefully not the predator as well. Let's not let's not overcomplicate oh, yeah. things. I don't know why I said um, that. <laughs> um, has everyone crazy. had a good week? Has everyone had a good week? Nick, have you had a good week? Time's been good for you. It's been an okay week, aside from the fact that my oh, ducted oh. heating busted. Oh, expensive. Like, yeah, right. Like <laughs> we got a quote to replace the whole thing, which we're gonna try and avoid doing, and it was thirty k. To replace the whole thing, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'll just buy a couple of portable heaters. I'm not gonna fucking. Oh mate, is this the whole heating throughout the house? Mm. So, sorry, how does this work? Is this like the opposite of aircon? Is it run on the same system? Explain this to it's me. Run, it runs on. It does both. It's a, it's right. A okay. Does now the, I understand. The aircon works. The aircon works, but the heating is gone. Right yeah. as the cold weather is starting. That's why I'm wearing this jumper. I'm very cold right now. Oh my god, this is a nightmare! Wow. Oh man, bad anyway. times, bad times. Yeah, well, it. chat. It's lovely to see everybody here. Um, as always, um, thank you for joining us and being wonderful. Before we get into anything else, 
now we didn't have time to make an adjustment, but we were dared by some of our Patreon members to create a tier of Patreon support that is so mind bogglingly stupid <laughs> that no one would do it. And we had to call it a grand name. So we call it the grand, Xbox era grand benefactor because what else could you call someone that hit mm. the crazy tier? And Torn Raptor only went and bloody joined that tier, didn't he? So yeah. he gets permanently called out on the screen now. Um, and With his own animation. We're of, we don't know what, like, we don't know literally what else we can do to give back to this man that is supporting us so wildly and brilliantly. So the only suggestion I could really come up with is that um, he gets to just make a statement any any time he wants, and I have to deliver it like a town crier uh, when when he wishes on any episode. So, is he ever in the chat? He's not in the chat much. He he he's, he. he he's there he's, he's lurking he's a lurking supporter but um thank you torn raptor you absolute madman um god love you he also has a very shiny animated badge on the forums but yeah and it's I mean, there it's humbling it's in obs it's, it's directly yeah. below you wow. hmm. so torn raptor what a ledge um but yeah there you go uh cheese works all the usual crew hiding in the chat brit radoski lovely to see you guys trav out at Hades as well. There's lots of everybody. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Zach Riley, Pico Trick. Ma Bonsicus. Imagine if all of them hit that like button. It's it, it is. We always say <clears throat> a view is equivalent to a like, which is also actually equivalent to a dislike. Funnily enough, which is equivalent to a subscribe. So they all help in getting us back up that YouTube algorithm on which the cliff we have dropped. Oh, everyone has dropped, it yeah. seems. Um, although I feel like we're starting to climb out of the precipice of the YouTube doldrums. Um, what can we say? For some reason, Xbox-focused viewership is, is seemingly on a bit of a low right now. I can't think why. It's because um, every version of their game is inferior to the <laughs> PS5 version. <laughs> oh, we're going to get into that. Before we do, though, uh, it's, as always, tradition at this point to talk a little bit about the games we have been playing. And I think, Nick, we will start with you, sir. What have you been playing yeah. this week? What have you been enjoying in so, video Jesse, game land? am I allowed to mention the games I've been playing? You're allowed to mention the games. One, you've played at the arcade. You can talk about the arcade version all you want. The other, you can talk about the gameplay mechanics only. Okay, and then the third one I can't mention at all. No, unless you want me to be liable legally. Yeah, okay, no mentioning. Okay, so the third game I want to talk about. <clears throat> no, no, you won't. Uh, at the arcades in the past, I played Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade Wrath of the Mutants back in the day. It's an arcade game that came out in 2017. It's getting a console port soon. But of I've which played you it can in the find, arcades. You can find the entire console port as a Let's Play already because somebody doesn't know how to read their embargo, I yes, guess. Yes, there are a couple of people that have uploaded full nine-hour, or oh, I don't know how long it is. They're really long videos. Full gameplay, for some reason, of TMNT, Wrath of the Mutants. But I haven't played the console version. I've played the arcade version. Um, And yeah, it's... um. It's very, it's very faithful to the arcade, the arcade version. Mm -hmm. So, well, just know, watching yeah. this footage, I think one could say, "Wow, this looks exactly like the arcade version." Exactly like the arcade version, um, and you know, TMNT has a very long, proud history of really good arcade beat 'em ups. So this is another one based on the... Did any of you guys watch the 2012 TMNT Nickelodeon mm. TV I've seen series? bits of it. It was I awesome. It. it was so good. It had five seasons. The last season or two went a little bit weird and off the rails. But those first three seasons were actually fantastic. Like, it's actually a really, really good, really fun show. Um, and this game is based on that tv series um and, and it really like it really faithfully sort of uh provides the vibe and the look of that show in a really really good way they brought back all the original voice cast so seth green sean austin they're all voicing their characters oh, wow. um 
So in in that sense, they've done a brilliant job. If you've watched the cartoon, the 2012 cartoon. Um, but yeah, it it you know it they went out of their way to try and keep a lot of the the tropes of those TMNT beat 'em ups, like falling into the pothole if you happen to fall into the pothole and pizza time and this. So yeah, um, a few little extras here and there, but. Yeah, for those of you looking for another Turtles arcade game, that one's coming soon to consoles. I have also been playing, unfortunately not on Mac, but I have been playing uh, Tales of Kinsera Zao. Just not on Mac. Did you, did you see? He just replied to a tweet of mine where I talked about Super Mario Odyssey being a 10 out of 10, and Abu replied to it going, but it's not on Mac. You shall he's, like, <laughs> he's got you there. He's like, it's not on Mac. <laughs> it could um, be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, if you want it to be. Um, so I've been playing Tales of Kinsera Zao. Now, I'm not allowed to talk about the story. Others have been, the but game. we're normally actually pay attention to embargoes where they have well, said... Well, luck- luckily for yeah. you and Xbox era, I don't pay attention to stories, so yeah. I couldn't tell you anyway. Yeah, you've been on. skipping all the um, cutscenes of an incredibly emotional, heartfelt tale that he's been going on and on about. Well, no, Even on this show. It, doesn't, it doesn't let you skip the cutscenes. It doesn't let you skip the yeah. cutscenes, but you can fast forward the talk. And so that would be information that. you could know from the demo. Yes, you, you just keep pressing it and get it to Or you really listen fast. to it so because in the demo it was really good, so maybe it's going to be really good in the main game too. It's maybe, not long. He said it's eight hours. Be... You got eight hours. You like movies. Um, you like stories. So I've been, pl- I've been playing that. Um, mechanically, it feels really nice. Like I actually, I actually messaged him and said it feels really punchy and I like how like the combat and everything. If Everything... Like the one thing I like, I noticed immediately that I preferred over Prince of Persia was how it felt when you hit someone, and like that—that that was really nice. Um, it, it was. God, now I'm wor- they've got two things. So they've got the bar on them. That's just their health, yep. and then sometimes there's a little yes. extra armor bar. So when they've got no he- when they've got no armor bar, every time you hit them, it will like stun them, and so it just it feel yes. you get that immediate you know feeling yeah, yeah. of i'm not going to get hit in the, by them mid attack which can be very annoying in those types of games and does come in if they've got the armor bar cuz you've got to get rid of that armor bar before you can take that yes. health down so it's it's tough like i'm i was shocked at how many times i was like getting beaten <laughs> by some of the enemies um and right off the bat it, it, it's it's you feel competent. You don't feel super weak to start. Like even in the demo, yeah. you you start out. You got double jump. You've got decent abilities, yes. and you're you do you've got the two masks. Yeah, they talk about unlocking more. They've they've already gone over that in previews. Yes. You will unlock more things, so it is still that Metroidvania thing where you will get abilities that let you access new areas. But early on, it, I never just... felt super weak. Yeah, it's just unique. This is a unique Metroidvania in that. You don't start with nothing like most Metroidvanias. But the traditional Metroidvanias, you just start with literally pretty much nothing outside or of the basic attack. You start with a lot, and then you get it all. And then they away take it off you. Zelda style, they take yeah. it off you. Yes, and this is neither of those things. This is somewhere in the middle where you actually start with stuff and you upgrade that that stuff, as well as finding some new stuff. So it's a slightly different twist on that. Um, very beautiful game. Um, very yeah, very very pretty game. I'm I'm enjoying it so far. Mm. Um, I, I've booted it up. I haven't played uh, an enormous amount because I realised that I want. I I know that if I start this, like all Metroidvanias, I will just get lost in it. And uh, I'm just mm-hmm. going to wait for a, an opportune moment where uh, I'm not as you have as a day, crazed. and you can be yeah. There. I kind of want to be like on my own, no no kids and no no duties to perform. And uh, with birthdays coming up this week, uh, it's it's not on the cards. I think I'm, I'll try and get in uh, at some point Wednesday. I think this. Right. Week. And I do like to break it down for chat. It. They're like, don't get sued as a joke. And I know it's kidding, but embargoes it just ruins your relationship it's ndas where you can get in legal trouble but 
Yes. There's like yeah. take, take two and a couple other ones are the only ones that have ever approached us on stuff like that. Most are literally just a if you agree to this embargo, and then if yeah. you break that embargo, we just probably won't work with you again because we won't trust you. And you'd be amazed at how many people don't read those things. Nope. Um, we do. We pay attention to, to what we're yes. doing. And that's why we're not like talking about that. the third game that I'm playing. Yes. Because yes. of that. But you'll, you'll hear and see more about that third game at some point. In the future. Soon. In the future. Oh, within nebulous. the next 10 years. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what about you? So, yes. That's it. <laughs> What about you, Jesse? What have you been playing? I think you've been playing the same thing that I have, right? No rest yeah, for the week. The main thing, um, <clears throat> doing the review in progress, which will be scored because it, everyone just always wants a freaking score. Um, no rest for the wicked. I'm 10 ish hours in now. Um, John and I did a hangout stream a couple days ago and we both enjoyed it. I have started hitting, as someone who really enjoys the action RPG genre, I have started hitting some things that are not the most enjoyable part of it and even thomas was joking he's like well we've got the we've got the task of making our 65 into a 90 game on yeah who gave him a 65 or 58 i think i saw on twitter yeah it's it's pretty much they get all the go back to town and sort through your loot and get ready to go back out again wrong it's so busy work like it just it takes in diablo you teleport back to town from anywhere in a minute. You sell everything you have. You drop anything you want to keep off in your chest. You get ready if you need any consumables in a minute or two, and then you're immediately right back to where you were. But with this one's focus on being more Souls-like, they want you to run to the Souls bonfire equivalent, except for that bonfire can't teleport to other bonfires. It can only teleport back to the city and then immediately back to it. So you have to sometimes run a long way to find a teleport path. Then you have to run around the city way too much if you want to drop off any um, gear. Like, it's just, there's very easy to fix quality of life stuff. Because other than that, graphically, story-wise, music when it kicks in, because I'm sure they're going to add Oof. more over time. And gameplay-wise, once you commit to the pace they want you to play at, fantastic like it's yeah. got all of the main things nailed they just need to nail the loop for going back to town they've already made durability way less of an issue which was like why everyone was review bombing it on steam even though durability is always a thing durability is a thing in diablo durability was always a thing in dark souls up until elden ring it's just a incentivizes you to try to not die a little bit more that's it and yeah. i i would i would say like to thomas marler the one th the one very positive thing i'd say about it because i haven't played it as much as you i'm going to dive back into some more tomorrow um but i can see it like what i did play it i know it's not diablo right and i've played diablo and it's okay it's not necessarily for me like you mm -hmm. say it's kind of mindless at times diablo eventually this is a lot more in like you've really got to pay attention to the enemy attack cycles and patterns and mm -hmm. you know you don't just button mash there's a method and a flow to this and it's the kind of game that I can see me, I can see it making me fall in love a little bit with the genre and then kind of exploring other, like there's, I didn't expect it to do that. There's um, not a lot it's like very it. very nice. Mm. Um, yeah, it's was, very unique. There's one game on Game Pass that I reviewed and I feel really bad. I can't remember it. It was Curse of Something. It was a third person roguelike that was more like this than most action RPGs are. It was isometric. It was slower. Um, I cannot friggin' remember the name of it, and it's been really Hades? pissing me up. No, no, Hades is super fast. Curse and of the Dead Gods. I know, gods. it's fast. Curse, Curse of the Dead of, Gods. Of the Dead yes, Gods. Yes, thank you. Yep. Yeah, Curse of the Dead Gods, I remember being maybe closer to this, but it is a run-based roguelike, so it's not this. Um, this is them, I think, more than Ori. Like West of Dead. Yeah, more than... Oh, West God. of Dead is good. Ugh. West of Dead yeah, is good. Their follow-up game, I gave a five, and I was not... Hey, yes, that's Hellboy. That's the, Hellboy. The friggin' alert box works right in the middle. Faisal Hassan with a $7 super chat. Now it just shows up every time. If you wow. want to hit it. Yeah, go for it. Oh. Nicholas. Um, Faisal. Taps mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, have a great show, lads. Uh, question for Jesse. I've played Outer Worlds and Starfield. Hated Fallout in the past, but I want to try. 
Uh, New Vegas or four? <laughs> New Vegas. Is well, obviously it's New Vegas, Jesse, right? Because mm-hmm. four's shit and Bethesda is shit. No, <laughs> it is New Vegas is more. I want to that was needlessly do the, aggressive. Uh, that's how the internet's I'm, been. I'm rolling with it. <laughs> New Vegas, if you want more choice focused RPG. <laughs> yeah, I try not to, but then you're like. <laughs> New Vegas, if you want the more choice-focused RPG. And then um, if you just want the more shooter, go find your fun type of Bethesda game. Um, You like the Starfield more than the Outer Worlds, you go for the 4 or you go for the New Vegas. They're both very good, though. Diplomatic answer. By the way. They're not super similar. Like, it is just in the end. They're not. Yeah. Keep, By the way, keep, so keep talking about what you're playing. There's a super chat we missed last week, so I took <gasps> a screenshot of it. Ooh. I took a screenshot of it last week after the show, and I'll read it out after we talk about what we've okay. been playing. Yeah, so sorry, to, Jason Hamilton, if you're watching. To finish off about um, No Rest for the Wicked for me, it is mainly a, <clears throat> this is it was very smart of them to go into early access because they were already getting a lot of the feedback that I think will make the game go from being good to great because the yeah. gameplay loop can be great, but my progression in my realm is broken. I only have two. Qu- I, I I was level five, and I had two quests. One quest was level eleven, and one quest was level fifteen. That was it. They didn't actually Woof. generate any other quests for me to level up. So I just went around, killed everything I could, get up to like level eight, and that was enough. Where I'm at the end of the level eleven quest, but I'm only level nine, so I'm still getting my ass kicked. But I I have almost beat them. Um, nice. But those are the types of things where it's like, yeah, they had a lot of stuff nailed here, but they'll, much like Hades 2 is going to do, hopefully correctly use their time, fix it all up, and then when 1.0 hits, everyone falls in love with it, like happened with Hades. Because people people don't remember, like Hades was in early access for a long time, and then yeah. it hit 1.0 and everyone was like, holy shit, this is amazing. It's like, yeah, they did the Baldur's Gate 3 thing first they did the dead cells thing like using early access for those types of games is brilliant because you get so much excellent feedback so you get a lot of dumb shit too but people are really good at saying no that's just that's not fun and then like three thousand more people all say it and they're like oh okay yeah that doesn't work well that's try something else deny that kind of feedback in 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 mass yeah absolutely and Faisal try Mm. four on the 25th because that's when it's getting patched New yeah. patch. Wait, wait until the patch. Wait until the patch. Um, I think, and, and as well, if you're curious about it, I think Jesse's planning on loading up uh, Fallout 4 on the 25th for a Coffee with Cabeza stream. So you'll be able to like, get a yeah. feel for it, maybe from maybe his later. gameplay before you, you dive know, I set the stream for 10, but I'm like, oh, I don't actually know when the patch is going live. Might be later in the afternoon. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, yeah. The only other thing I would mention in terms of... Uh, I've been playing, obviously, Bellatro still because it's a horrible addiction. I hate that game. I love that game. I still think uh, I'm not playing it properly. I, it's, yeah, it's... It's entirely just is, about making your jokers all work in synergy with I know, your levels. But and... I see people getting scores. Like, I saw someone, I think that the PR guy for Bellatro. Yeah. He posted Oops. a screenshot. Yes. He posted a screenshot of a, his biggest hand was like 5.03 E25. Yeah, yeah, I'm it's like, in the hundreds oh of millions. Oh, my God. How? Right. So all I would say is as you – so I've, I've done something rather foolish, I think. As I've been playing Bellatro, I got to the checkered deck. Now, I've unlocked all of the decks now, right? And I've beaten mm. the checkered deck. I've beaten like some decks on various difficulties, but I've beaten the checkered deck all the way up to gold stake, which is the last stake – difficulty wise right but as you go up the difficulty stakes you'll start getting to a point where you'll have jokers that are eternal and other sorts of like buffs and debuffs they can never be sold they can never be destroyed never be destroyed and i did a run the other day on the checkered deck now checkered deck is just spades and hearts that's all you've got like double double the run of each so you just play flushes right so you're constantly Mm. gearing your mind and your brain to flush deck mostly and I got to the point where I got, you know, the, the cutout joker, the stencil joker gives you a times five mole or a times whatever empty joker slots you have, excluding itself. So if you have so. a standard five joker slots and you yeah. have the cutout one, I got him as an eternal. 
But then in the later difficulties, you'll start getting soul cards in, in the arcane packs, which give you legendary jokers and other such things. Uh, I think and that's this is my where problem. It, I just keep playing on the base difficulty. Yeah, up up the difficulty, like unlock more and you'll start to, to get more like, freaky things. My biggest hand on base difficulty, I think my biggest hand was almost 100,000. And that's it. That's all I've been able to crack. Like yeah, in like, the high tens of thousands. I did. Mm. I did a run with that stencil joker where I got three, uh, um, or t two or three. Um, not the arcane packs. What's the other one? The the spectral packs, Planet. right? Oh, spectral. No, not the pack. The spectral, and it it, it was a uh, each time I got a card that copied my joker and destroyed it and replaced it, but it can't destroy an endless joker. So I had three cutout jokers, which were all giving me times 15 on everything oh, so wow. once i got some chip jokers to fill in the gaps and some other malts i was doing something like a times 17.5 on my score and i was getting millions per hand it was glorious so, was oh, so i need beauty. to up the difficulties what you're saying mm -hmm. I'm playing playing those stakes. the actual progression uh, of the game different thing on youtube see if that works better boop, boop. let's see gaz is streaming right. just fine well, I mean, it depends. Yeah, it's the, it's it's the just... hops between you and the YouTube server. So there's just something hitting between me and YouTube that's just being a pain in the dick. But I don't know. We'll try and see. Is it changing? No, it's still on the same one. I don't it think it's trying to come back. Yeah, I don't know what the heck it's doing right now. Just give me a sec. It's always annoying. Cause, but I just, I don't know. But it's like, it's, I don't think I'm struggling to send to you, right? I might be. Let me see. No, I can I see mean, you fine. You're, there. you're it's, there. I mean, yeah. on, on my end, you've been a little bit funny. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, it's totally just... All right. You guys can hear me. Now I'm going to go back in the call. <clears throat> All right. I'm sending to the other... Sending to the other YouTube server now. So hopefully it's better. Uh, hey. The display's gone. There we huh? go. Yeah. Hi, I'm sending instead of their normal one. I'm sending to the other one, and it's working fine. So, hey, we're yeah. back. Sorry about that. <laughs> so yeah, so play play Blatro on higher difficulties. The problem I have now though is because I've ran the checkered deck so much that I now struggle to play the normal decks. Mm -hmm. So I'm having to like break the cycle of I just playing flushes. I've seen Tom really loves the <laughs> plasma deck, where the one that like combines your yeah, plasma chips. deck's cool. Yeah, yeah. I've Sorry, just I been late. playing white steak. Mm, yeah, I've you just been go playing up. white steak, and either the deck where you start with ten extra dollars, <clears> or the one where you have an extra joker slot, and that's all I do. Yeah. Okay. Start upping the difficulty, bro. Like, yeah. Make that your the goal. actual progression um, of the game. Okay. Hytham, stop yelling F. It's not F. The actual progression of the game is just unlocking more decks to unlock more difficulties to unlock more jokers, and that's how you end up getting the crazy numbers. F word. No, it is. It, he, mm. He's actually right. It is no. starting to go again. No, I'm not getting any Ugh. dropped frames or anything. That's so weird. Yeah. God damn it. YouTube. I know. It's so weird. And it's only, it only seems to be us. No, it was the Xbox That's 2 yesterday. So we're having the same thing. It's definitely not only us. There's a lot of streams on YouTube. Okay. So is that all we've been playing? That I can talk about? Yes. Well, the only other thing I was going to mention was uh, I dropped my review for Harold Halibut oh. earlier this week. Um, not my favourite gaming experience, um, which is a shame, but I hope I was somewhat fair and honest in that review. Um, yeah, I don't think you're far I off I would say open critic. Yeah, it's a, it's a divisive game, and I would implore everybody to go and try it and check it out on Game Pass because it's part of your subscription, so why not? Um, mm. But... If I could summarize my thoughts, it is that at some point in this project, to me, it feels like they forgot they were making a game. And, mm. you know, there was just too much uh, that was virtually uninteractive, right? And it was like, what? you know, if the point was to illustrate and, and convey boring mundaneness of Harold's life, then you nailed it. But the detrimental effect of that meant that I was becoming increasingly like, you know, just like there's a point in the game and people that have played it will know what I but mean. Isn't it like a point and click adventure type game? No, 
And there is where it, the problem is. They were going to make it a point and click adventure, but it's a narrative adventure. So the only real interactions you have is you walk and you initiate conversations. And occasionally you'll like unscrew stuff and you'll occasionally have really? some very. Yeah. And th that that is a, a a bit of a shame to me. It's a bit of a lost. Like there was people that have played it will know. Um, <laughs> there's a countdown that happens that shows you how many days after the crash and how many days until launch, right? And there came a time where I was like, please hurry up. Like at some point it was like 72 mm. days till launch. And I'm like, please fast forward because I can't do 72 days of Harold's life. Um, but yeah, uh, there's lots of people talking in the chat like we're down. Yeah, yeah I'm watching not. it. Mm. I, it's because it's YouTube side. Like YouTube is just completely fucked up. I'm watching it just fine, and I'm the one that normally sees that stuff first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so go check it out. But I feel like my my score is fair. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it okay. it's a shame. It's beautiful to look at. I've never seen anything look more fantastic. Oh yeah, on a, visually on it just looks it's incredible. Like, wow. Yeah, visually it looks um, incredible. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Okay. Uh, now what I want to do is. I want to read out that super chat and I feel bad now because I've just checked and Jason Hamilton is definitely not in our chat. So maybe we got him upset by not reading his super chat last week. So mm -hmm. I feel very bad. So if you're, if you're watching this on replay, Jason Hamilton, I've got your super chat from last week. It says, thanks guys for getting me hooked on Bellatro. Game has me like vampire survivors and well worth the money. Ever thought of interviewing the dev? Well, Jason, <laughs> we did. I, I, I tried to get him on the podcast. That he's a very private person. But what they did say to me, because I'm friends with the PR guy for Bolatro, he said, Hey, he's happy he'll do it he'll do like a, a written text interview, no problem. So Jesse did that like seconds yeah. later. And it's funny, um, I actually remember this super chat and I remember replying in the chat and giving him the link to that out. interview. Uh maybe that's why. But we didn't read it out. Um our so, bad. yes, and, and the dev of Bolatro, you know, want to know how you know the dude knows what's up? <laughs> he plays Rocket League. Yeah, of course. Mate. He's the type that says GG up. whenever the, his teammates give up a goal. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's so toxic. It's so Are toxic. you excited about the X Men 97 stuff coming to Rocket League, Nick? Yeah, that'd be cool. I'll get Wolverine. Okay, Wolverine. It's like toppers That's and cool. a paint job and whatnot. Yeah. Oh, Rocket League, not yeah. Fortnite. It'll be yeah, Fortnite League. eventually. But yeah. It'd be funny if they had oh, a Wolverine now. car, like an old monster truck. Oh, now, right. we, now, we're going to get into no. the news, right? Oh, we're not. Okay. No, not yet. So I mentioned earlier, I mentioned earlier how cold I am. But mm -hmm. luckily, even though I'm using cold milk... Control has still been warming me up, <laughs> despite despite my ducted heating being out, and I need to start a GoFundMe to help pay to fix it. <laughs> Make sure I've still. Luckily, I've still got my control. So go to www.drinkcontrol.com forward slash Xbox Era. Use our code for ten percent off Xbox Era. So good. Apple Smacks. I've got Apple Smacks now. This is quite nice. The strawberries and cream and banana splits are my favorite, and. I'm very sad because the banana split's almost out. Yep, I still need to try those. But yeah. Lovely. So yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, where should they go if they want to? On with the chlorophyll. Off? Did we do that bit? I don't remember you yes, saying. Yes, I did. I did. Okay. Okay, it's in the chat. It's all right. Um, yeah, on with the on with the news. The news. On with the chlorophyll. <sighs> the chlorophyll. Billy Madison. On with the chlorophyll. Yeah, Don't you really remember when he's like chlorophyll, more like borophyll, <laughs> and then like he's just distracting the class? <laughs> Come uh, on, man. I can you not remember Billy Madison? Gosh. It's been a long time. Sorry, mate. Come on. It's been a while. On with the chlorophyll. I don't remember um, most. I don't know where to start. There. I'm going to start with um, Keanu Reeves. Hell yeah. Keanu Reeves is reportedly is voicing Shadow the Hedgehog in the Sonic the Hedgehog 3 movie. That's Which a will put great him, choice. Like, puts him with Idris Elba with Knuckles. And who voices Sonic? Uh, I know. His name is Ben something. I know him as the dude from House of Lies. <laughs> That's how I know him with, with um, 
Oh my god. Why is everyone's name going blank on me these days? House of Lies. Um, where is he? Don ben Cheadle. Schwartz. Ben Schwartz. Oh, it's Ben yeah. Schwartz. He he's in House of Lies with Don Cheadle, which is actually a great show. Um, so yes, Ben Schwartz is Sonic. And got he's Jim being, Carrey being he's joined by uh, Idris Elba, Johnny Silverhand, and Thornton Reed from Cyberpunk back together again. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah. And it's, um. Yeah. So Keanu cool. is Shadow, which I reckon is a good choice. I, like I, I, I think about his voice, Keanu's voice, and I think about Shadow's game uh, voice actor, and I'm like, okay, I can see why Keanu well, Shadow was choice. always a big tryhard, and, and you can like do yeah. the Johnny, cool do the, the Keanu Reeves cool. voice, like you're trying to. Yeah. Try. I really hope they throw some cool John Wick references in, just like no, to yeah. he's Matrix. got a gun. Yeah, all my tricks is fine. Yeah. Like, at some point, you know, at some point, you know Shadow's going to be like, whoa, <laughs> just like out of the Matrix. You know he's going to, like, at some stage. Whoa. There'll be a whoa. And Damn, he'll, you know. he'll do something from, like, all his movies. Like, he's got to do be something the, from it'll Speed. It'll be the Leonardo DiCaprio gif, wouldn't it be like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got to do something from Speed. He's got to do something from um, uh, Point Break. Matrix, yep. John Wick, uh, um, yeah, like has uh, to, it just has to. That'd be fantastic. Um, I, like, Blue Moon I like, FC I like it. says uh, Keanu's voice is good, but all it does is, it, all, and all it does is compare to John's Mohican. John's it is Mohican. pretty, pretty badass Mohican for an mm. old man. The I want am- Keanu Reeves to do his um, Dracula voice, where he attempted to be British. Boy, was that bad? God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Jonathan. Well, I his acting in um, Bram Stoker's Dracula was was sure something. It the funny thing re- about Keanu is he's not actually that great of an actor. No. He's not. Have you? It just reminded he's me. Not. It makes me want to go watch The Devil's Advocate with Al Pacino. Oh God, mm. that movie's so good. Right, Al Pacino is like. A fucking titan of an actor, right? Yes. And then you've got the plank of wood that is Keanu. Keanu. Oh, and you've got, like, Charlie's <laughs> Theron. So, he's a Young box Charlie's of cereal. being incredible. Um, for yeah. the other woman, oh, his yeah. sister being, who's a really good actress. Yes. And, and then it's yes. like everything's carried by the guy that's looks cool. And then you've got Mr. In- Mr. Yeah. Incredible. The voice of Mr. Incredible is in there as well. Is he really? I'll, have to, I'll yeah. need to go watch that film again, man. I need to go watch he's that He's the film. guy that's in court getting done for murdering his wife or whatever ah i haven't seen it in ages i was cruising uh, cruising through streaming services earlier and i was like another great al pacino movie (laughs) Mm. al pacino's uh, heat heat with al pacino and robert de niro if you haven't seen heat michael mann incredible incredible would you believe heat was one of those movies i fell asleep in when i was young yeah i would mate is it good yeah nick out out like a light. I don't, I don't remember any of Heat. I have to oh watch it. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, i tell you what you should watch, though. And I mentioned it before the show, but certainly to the chat, uh, I spent a lot of today binging Baby Reindeer on No Netflix spoilers in chat. And no spoilers. Go in blind. It's set in It's set in. Poke your eyes out and go in. And it's a true story, and it is insane. And I am like... Yeah, I want to watch it. I'm like... I was floored. I, I was it. like... It's it's cringe and it's horrific and it is it's just very good. Go watch it. Is it um, a TV show or a movie? It's a it's a limited series, one and done, seven episodes done, and a lot of them are about half oh. hour long. So you can you can do it in a day, easy. Um, but yeah, what, go, what go watch streaming it. service is it on? Netflix. Uh, Netflix. Netflix. Oh, okay. Is where it's available. So it's on a streaming service. It's on it's on a streaming service, <laughs> not a streaming service. <laughs> I did a free trial for Shutter so my brother could watch Late Night with the Devil. I'm like, you What's too. it called? What's it called? Baby, Baby Reindeer. Reindeer. Don't start telling me you're having issues again, YouTube. <laughs> Stay strong. Uh, anyway. Um, um, so, yes, Keanu. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Oh my being, god! He can't handle He's being cold. fucking lost it. He's lost it. This is why he likes being uh, warm. 
Hello, Xbox. Do you know what? I, uh, Luke, I love Luke. Hi, Luke. I can't wait until <laughs> all three of us are here in, in this house doing a live show before Gamescom because it is going to be fucking How hilarious. tall are both of you again? Oh. Oh, I'm a shorty, mate. I'm a short I'm king. I'm 5'9". Five five seven. Seven. I'm not yeah. tall. I'm 5'9". I'm about 6'1". 5'7". So. Wow. Yeah. Giant America. We'll sit in height order. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's gonna it will make it I, I have an incredibly long torso and like average length legs so if we're sitting i'm on like couch, i'm the same yeah i'm gonna just be like i've got a long body and short legs yeah. i'm exact very low center of gravity i should be like six three um, but my legs are pretty stocky um but yes what were we talking about keanu <laughs> yes keanu Keanu is one of those actors where he's not actually technically a good actor, but you love watching him and you love watching the films he is in. It's weird how he and he's one of the only actors that can get away with it. Yeah, I would agree. Um, yeah, it's um, it's it's funny like that. Like I love John Wick. John Wick is like amazing, but. Keanu technically is not a good actor. He's a vehicle for cool gunfights, and he's a That's, really cool yeah, guy. It's, so I'm happy to see him do it. He's a, he's a really yes, good like he 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 puts a lot into what he does. Like, have you seen his training videos for John Wick? Like when he was training to do all the gun stuff. Like he can actually yeah, it was do full that on. shit. He, he is yeah, it was full on. Like um, but yeah, it is. It's just one of those things. Um, yes, but yeah. I'd watch anything he's in, pretty much. Like, he's a fun guy. Yeah, that's what I mean. He's one of those actors where you'll watch basically anything that he is in. Um, despite the fact that he actually isn't really a good actor. So, yeah, Point Break was great. Point I, Break with Swayze was really good. I, I honestly remember. think... Uh, I was going to say, I think his best acting job is in chat and is Johnny Silverhand. He's actually really good as Johnny Silverhand. I haven't seen it. No, we haven't played it. Is that That's the movie? Cyberpunk. Is that the name of the movie? No, it's, him, no, him it's Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, his character, oh, acting, his voice acting in Cyberpunk is really good. I haven't played good. that game. Yeah. It's <laughs> I not a you played game. That game. It's very fun to play, uh, but you will have no idea what to do if you skip the cutscenes or what's going on. So don't play it. So now oh, okay. Brit's brought up my other favorite uh, actor like that, Nick, which is Nick Cage. And Brit says, Keanu is like Nick Cage. Almost like oh, that movie. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. No, no. Nicholas Cage can act when he feels like it. N- Nicholas no, Cage, no, no, no. Uh, no, he's no, won no, an like, Oscar. Yeah, he's won an Nicholas, Oscar. Like he can let, act let me, when he feels this. like it. Nicholas Cage is a a fantastic actor. I completely agree, but he often does a lot of absolutely terrible movies. Yes, hundred percent for cash or whatever he and, wants. And he also does some terrible acting jobs. Yes, as well as in he where he's in. just a bad actor, like Con Air. Con Air is still an incredible movie. <laughs> it's horrible. I hate that movie with a passion. I hate it. <gasps> Con oh, Air. Mate. Mm-hmm. That's, no, you can't hate oh, Con Air. Come no, on, man. Like, when he gets come out, like Nicholas like Cage's it, hair so is almost as good as Nicholas Cage. <laughs> Put the like, bonnet back in the box. <laughs> it is very fun to watch people make fun of. So I've liked the movie commentaries with it, but that's kind of like the oh. rule for me. You know, like so bad Con it's Air. funny to make fun of. Ah. Oh. Con Air is a classic. It's, yeah. And John Malkovich is great in it. Yeah. Um, uh, I, Mandy is an excellent Nick Cage flick. Like, if we're talking actually good Nick Cage flicks, Mandy's brilliant if you've not seen that. Ghost Rider. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Filmed in Melbourne. Ghost yeah. Rider. Have you watched Pig? No. Yeah, Pig is the one where he's a, a chef and he has a pig and he's hunting for truffles. Yeah. It's, it's actually weirdly no. compelling. Yeah, oh, no, it's, it was a really good movie. Yeah, face um, off. Oh, oh, face off. What a film. He took his oh face. My God. Took oh. this. Oh. <laughs> Fucking hate um, face off. Hate that movie. <laughs> <laughs> you make my taste in movies, and then you're like, kind of shit. I, I don't hate like face bad off. movies. I'm sorry. Ang Lee makes mostly bad Whatever, movies. Whatever, man. <laughs> Whatever, man. It was hey, hold on, hold on. Eight millimeter. Oh, come on. I remember. Mm. I haven't seen it since it was <gasps> new. I remember liking it. But it was a very, very eight very millimeter. No, I'm saying I haven't, I haven't seen, seen it, it since it was at the theaters. I remember liking it, but I don't know if I would know. I don't remember anything about it. You have to. You've just you've I, just reminded me of there's a comedian called Stuart Lee, Brit, British comedian, and he does this sketch on Ang Lee. And when he met Ang Lee, he apparently goes, "Hi, Ang Lee, you wouldn't like me when I'm Ang Lee. Don't call me Ang Lee." Because <laughs> <laughs> he he directed the Incredible Hulk. 
<laughs> and Ang, Ang Lee apparently in this chat just went to him, what? He's like, huh? it's it's a joke, you know, like, don't make me Ang Lee. You wouldn't like me when I'm Ang Lee. And Ang Lee was just like, I don't get it. <laughs> oh, yeah, kick ass. Nick Cage is, Nick is kick great. Ass. Yeah, he was great in that. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, this is tangents galore, but you know, he's we're a just good actor when he wants to be a good actor, Nick Cage. That's the thing with and, when and he's not taking a role to pay off himself. his massive tax debt. Yes, even when he plays himself in that burden of talent, unbearable thing weight with Pedro of Pascal. talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah unbearable yeah. weight of massive that talent. Too. Yeah, that's yeah, great. He's good in that. And and Renfield, that's I haven't he's seen like, Renfield yet. And he's he's chewing it. the scenery in Renfield. He's just really like that's that's his dream role. He always wanted to be Dracula. Yes, where he just has to act like a fucking dickhead. Like he's just like <laughs> wah, wah, wah. like he's being a vampire. Like he, he, <laughs> you could tell he just loved it. Um, yeah, you should watch it. Watch it on one of your streaming services that you subscribe. I will. To. I will check it out. I believe I do have it available on one of the streaming services to which I am subscribed. I, I'm only uh, into. I'm only into like the silly, over the top stuff like Face Off when it's being made fun of. I just. I don't. My brain doesn't click off. It's such a stupid movie with such bad acting from Travolta. Like if it was just Cage and someone on Cage's level in that movie, it'd be a lot better. But when it's Cage acting against Travolta, who cannot act, can't do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Travolta's another one. Oh, Travolta's God. another one. <laughs> um, <laughs> what have we been smoking tonight? I mean, it is, it's 4.20. You tell me. <sighs> anyway, um, also, um, excuse me. Um, <laughs> in other news... <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. So, if you are a YouTube member or a uh, Patreon member, uh, you get access to a wonderful show where we actually dive into lots of different movies and TV shows called Sick and Nick's Flicks. Now we need um, to do a Nick Cage episode. We probably do. Um, and funnily enough, and I'm going to bring up this to segue into the news this week because uh, in that show yesterday, which is available right now for YouTube members and Patreon subscribers, we talked a little bit about Fallout and a little bit naturally about Halo and Nick and I were in stitches as we made Jesse explode in rage and we're going to do it again live right now see if we can see if we can just fish some hooks into his mouth make him go mad maybe make it mute us um IGN had a long interview with Todd Howard and Jonathan Nolan about Fallout um and it was well worth a read uh I've seen the whole of Fallout now I've watched it all um thoroughly impressed with the show Jesse, you did the reviews for Fallout. Are you, you know, are you pretty much in agreement with all of the praise that the game has been given? The game, you dummy. The, no, uh, the, sorry, the, the yeah. show, the yes, show, the show. Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, it's really good. It's a a wonderful canvas to add into in a way that is, I, th I think, a lot harder than pretty much any other game adaption you've had because game adaptions are almost always a game featuring a Mario or Joel and Ellie, Master Chief. Twisted Metal could have been that if the games had any type of decent, interesting lore. That show was still fine. You know, it's not bad. Yeah. They, they, would, they were trying. But having an RPG that does not have a set protagonist but has this huge world and tons of lore to pull from, um, especially with what Interplay and Black Isle and then Bethesda have done with building up all the Fallout lore. Um, they made the very smart decision of let's respect the lore um, despite what insane fans keep trying to think because dates on a chalkboard mean nothing's canon, which is horseshit because in this interview they say, nope, every game fully canon, not saying what endings are canon unless something comes up that has to make one of them that. But like you've yeah. got this great tapestry you can add sections to and i think they did a really good job of that where it's not like the show is not good because they were so loyal to the lore but it is good in part for fans like me it's even better but then for everyone else it's just a great show with really good writing excellent acting beautiful cinematography a huge budget that really helped like convey this future apocalyptic world and also this alt history um, Los Angeles in 2077 for the flashback stuff like they just they had a great show made by extremely dedicated fans in a in a, an IP that really supports just building on top of it instead of trying to recreate it 
you know yeah 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 i i I agree and look for anyone watching thinking oh no i'm only one episode in we're not going to spoil any plot uh nick probably will knowing him he'll say something Oh, no, he's, not, he's only watched like a couple of episodes, right? I've only watched like three episodes or something. Yeah, so we won't we won't spoil anything. But I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on one because this was the source of our debate yesterday, and it was a good conversation. And so mm. you know, let's let's see what the chat think. There's one quote in this in this thing, and you know, we were having a discussion, and there's been a lot of vitriol online of comparing effectively what Halo did with its TV show and what Fallout did, and the difference between the two. Now, um. I did know earlier that when Halo came out, it was also right in the middle of all of the rumors and the and the third party stuff. And Xbox were kind of quite quiet, but because of the universal praise Fallout's gotten, you know, they've been quite ballsy about it in terms of marketing and social presence. Mm. Right? There's one quote from Todd Howard here that I this this nails it from me. This is in the IGN interview, and I'll, I'll read it verbatim here. Um, they're talking about, you know, would you have made the show in a way that, say, the Marvel Cinematic Universe does, where the movies are separate from the comics? Like, why make it intertwined with the lore of the games? And Todd Howard said, well, it's definitely harder to do, right? We just felt, as fans of Fallout, that would be the kind of show we'd want to watch and the things where we think the world of Fallout is going in the future. For me, I can't say enough about the job John Nolan and the team did on this in terms of I love to work with other creatives. And as Jonah was referencing what they were able to do with past with vault Tech, there's even more. I just thought as a fan of Fallout, it's an absolute delight. Um, now, they're talking about not ignoring the games and building the world, right? Mm. Um, and Like Halo did. Oh, you mean Halo ignored the games? Mm. <laughs> ha- I just Halo wish, that, well, I, I Halo, wish that the writing Halo, team for Halo had done that. But Halo might as well have been based on just something else entirely. Yeah. Never mind, eh? Just... But anyway, it's a really good interview. Um, so I would wholeheartedly recommend going to check it out. I will put a link in the chat. If you guys are all about the fallout, obviously, if you're just watching the show, maybe wait a little while because there's there's some spoilery stuff in there to do with some key plot points, especially oh. if you're a big fallout fan. So, you know, Ab- go Abdul. easy on it. Um, but it's Abdul it's... in the chat. What what a marketing boon that would have been if they had got Sydney Sweeney to play Lucy. Sydney Sweeney. Sorry, don't know that actress. Buxom blonde. Sydney Sweeney. She's this actress that's like the flavor of the month at the moment. She's not oh, okay. actually technically a good actress. Like like Keanu. Like, you know how Keanu's <laughs> not really a good actor, but everyone wants to watch what he's in? Sydney Sweeney's... I, I, can, I consider Sydney Sweeney Je, Gen Z or... Yeah, Gen Z's Jennifer Love Hewitt. Oh, okay. She was in Madame Webb. Okay, that's what not what she's known for, but yes, she was in Madden Okay, Way. okay. Uh yeah. Um, to me, I, I just call her Gen Z's Jennifer Love Hewitt. That's that's how I see it. Um but at, she's very much the flavour of the year, month, whatever. <laughs> and so it would have been a very interesting no, I, marketing. I, I think Ella Purnell and who's British? Oh by no, the way. Ella Purnell's great. I'm just saying. She's a Brit too. A comment from Abdul, and she's got a very uh, raised in the heart of Chelsea, toffee-nosed British accent as opposed to uh, mm, yeah. a, a Yank accent. Um, but I think she balances the line of like complete naivety and innocence, and then God, I hate this place. Kind of like it's, her character arc is great in the show. Um, she does a cracking job. Um, mm. As Amit said, Kumar, no why doesn't fall? I, d- I didn't spoil anything. What did I spoil? I love the character arc. Yep. I love you, the character arc what, in the show. You said what the arc was, though. It's a pretty predictable I arc. I did not. Yeah, you did. You literally said how she goes from naivety to hating everything. She, I said she balances her naivety and mm-hmm. also the I hate this place mm-hmm. parts. That's... Too late. You're going to get cancelled now. I doubt it. Um... Amit Kumar in the chat, Fallout uh, YouTube member, uh, says, why doesn't Fallout get compared to Gran Turismo or Twisted Metal? Uh, well, Gran Turismo, the movie, was based on the true story of a guy who actually yes. 
played Gran Turismo. So it's like it's not. It is about the game, but it's actually it's almost about like him. a documentary. more yeah. more than anything else. Almost. Yeah. Um, I, I was really surprised by that film as well because I didn't know that I story. Seen it yet. And then I was like, oh, okay. Well, so spoiler alert. Do you care? Because no, it's not. real life, so it's not really a spoiler, right? But he he, it's all true what he did he played became the a real he driver the yeah he became but a real he, driver didn't he he had an accident on the track where his car flew off of a off of a incline and yeah. uh, it killed someone in the crowd but that it's someone in the film. was going to be the next hitler so it's okay <laughs> yeah <sighs> but yeah it actually happened mm-hmm. it actually happened and he was like i'm never going to race again and his his coach was like you got to get straight behind the wheel or you'll never do it again um but yeah he actually that actually happened. I was just like, "Oh my god!" Like, that's terrifying. Like the the guilt that you would feel. Like it's not his fault. He was just driving, and his car just got picked up. And then he saw someone in the crowd's like, "Fuck that person!" And <laughs> <laughs> wow, I haven't seen that movie yet. <clears throat> I need yeah, to it's, it's all right. It's not. It's fine. You know. Um, streaming yeah. services that aren't in Australia. Uh, it's on uh, probably any streaming service you care to. Indulging, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think you could probably make that happen. Um, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so that's the Fallout IGN. Oh, it's interview. on Amazon, it's on Amazon Prime. It's on oh, there Amazon you go. Prime. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. um, next April's to- the- Game Pass wave. Mm, I was gonna say the next actual topic on the list really matches what you do have been talking about all the time, but <sighs> yeah, we'll do April Game Pass. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do. I'll do. I'll do. It was a pirate thing. Thingy. Yeah. Oh, Go. okay. What? I don't know mm-hmm. what you mean by that mm-hmm. reference. I have mm-hmm. no idea what you're mm-hmm. talking about. Um, Game Pass Wave Two for April uh, has t- six games. Um, we have coming up this way another Crab's Treasure, which uh, I believe we will have a review from Jesse. Closer to launch, uh, a Uden Chronicles Hundred Heroes, which we will have um, a review from Chengus. Closer to launch. Um, that yeah. game also is a. Oh wait, have you even done it yet? <laughs> well, I know when the embargo is, and I know I'm going to be busy. Yeah, <laughs> it is Japanese games because you only got me the files. Very, like, yeah, they have very strange embargoes. Also, it's like it's a it's a pixel art game. Just just throw like thirty second clips back and forth, and no one will, no one will notice or care. We have very high I'll standards on our on our video editing that we try to stick to. But sometimes when, when deadlines are super squished, we just got to give in a little bit. Cause also you're going to get Sandland really quickly. Cause he's got to turn that one around. He's just starting it. And that game's out on like Wednesday or Friday. Oh my God. Man's a machine. Uh, NHL 24 yeah. is coming to the service. Have a nice death. Orcs must die three I played, and Manor Lords. I played have a nice death. Pretty solid little roguelike. Um, super tight feeling controls immediately started opening up with more options on what to do looked okay i mean it's your death and you're just going around the underworld it's not super colorful or anything but yeah i think that that one might catch people by surprise it's uh very fun i might try and do a little quick review of it but I'm running out of time nice nice um a question from assassin entertainment youtube member and uh, executive producer of mm. Xbox Era. Here's a question, Sigma Mechanico. Why doesn't Microsoft have a real life Forza Motorsport competition or find a way to make the Horizon Festival into a real thing? Maybe when the game's multi platform. <laughs> yeah. I'm just joking. I'm just yanking your chain. I don't know. Uh, I imagine that's very expensive to pull off and cars driving around really fast with loads of people standing around. I mean, we literally just spoke about a, a random you know, viewer getting smushed by one on a racetrack. Like, I don't think they'd want to be liable for a festival. Um, Expensive. Lots of money. Mm. Uh, It would be cool, though, to see a real-life Horizon Festival. (laughs) Got an interesting DM. Oh. Oh, by the way, Nick, is there a uh, rumor mill later in the show? There is. It's been a while. (sighs) It has been a while. Would you describe this one as, as spicy? Very spicy. Very spicy. Would you just say a little bit of salsa? <laughs> a little bit of salsa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll get into that later in the show. Um, mm. Speaking um, mm. of uh, video games and uh, going third party, this one's caused a bit of drama on Twitter today. Um, but I'm going to start off with the good thing. Sea of Thieves is coming to PlayStation 5 on April the 30th. 
It Ooh. recently celebrated its milestone of 40 million players. Um, it was interesting because this came... nine of which are on PS5. <laughs> no, they either. were one dollar yeah, yeah, yeah. Game Pass uh, trials. Thirty nine point nine million. Right. Oh. So right. this is this is this this was curious timing, and I saw Tom Warren was like, "Wait, is this including the PS Five beta?" Because they did a PS Five beta, then they announced this, and the previous number we'd heard was thirty five million. So naturally, a lot of people were just doing the math and saying, "Oh, okay, so it's now had forty million players because five million people." tried it in the playstation 5 beta that is not the case this is just on xbox and pc and steam uh, so windows pc's version and steam um no okay. nothing nothing else 40 million people have played sea of thieves yeah, i mean that's it's that's also an incredible xbox is still game. a platform that hasn't had a good game in 13 years just gotta remember that nothing successful <laughs> yes not yes, a single yes of good course. game maybe they should make it a, a movie oh, i'd love to take on pirates of the either. caribbean you could do it you could do it microsoft and get Johnny Depp as the lead. <laughs> yeah, give him some work because Disney aren't going to touch him. He's not a pirate city boy. Just get him over into the city. Get him over. Movie. <laughs> I'm sure you get a lot of heroin Do on it. set. How funny would that be? Um, I, I, you Last know, I, heard. I was lucky enough to uh, meet Mike Chapman um, back at EXO 2019, right when they just before they announced Everwild. Funnily enough, um, and yeah, I, I as anyone that watches xbox zero i've loved sea of thieves we will be doing a re-review april 30th i'll start doing some live streams with the crew um and get capturing some footage and having some fun with that so keep an eye on uh, on the youtube channel for that but the reason it's now been in the news today uh is the digital foundry did for some reason a playstation 5 beta comparison to the current yeah. retail build on xbox and uh the shadows. Xbox owners cucked again. <laughs> the shadows. Are Not just the shadows. A little better. bit of <gasps> the um, level of detail. On a there was an island. Oh he my found. god! Okay, well I thought it wasn't a big deal, but yeah. now it is. So if you look, uh, um, Oliver McKenzie on Digital Foundry found an island where, if you look from far away and you then take the Digital Foundry zoom in, you'll realize there's one more bush on that island on PlayStation. <gasps> What? from the starting area it's not, it's not acceptable yeah mental it's not acceptable also people um, are trying to say the well, foliage is, is the better thing. but the foliage is actually like pr pretty procedural so it's not it's just not the same you can't really tell um and from <clears throat> i watched the video oliver's fine uh digital foundry's fine i just they they try to look at it from the scientific oh, oh, it's just it's a scientific curiosity to look at this i'm being nice and it's it's like scientifically it can be interesting but in the end, you know it just ends up becoming console war fodder shit because the actual look of the shadows on PlayStation are sharper, but they're like more pixelated. They're more juddery and jagged. I actually, I personally don't like that type of shadow in a video game because shadows in real life aren't super sharp and defined and detailed. And it's always off-putting and video game shadow to me when they are especially when they get super pixelated Man. like that it's like a personal preference thing and we'll you, see you what changes tell, on the patch you can yeah. tell that they can't wait for the next generation when the playstation's more powerful than the xbox they'd be they'd be waiting with bated breath i reckon i imagine i imagine it does a lot of great things for views like like i'm just being this is just my personal opinion but this isn't this isn't interesting outside of console war bait for me. There is nothing interesting in comparing these, but here's what I don't get. People are now freaking out on Twitter, right? And when I say people, or, you know, let's use that word loosely about Xbox, you know, this is a travesty. It's unacceptable, whatever, whatever phrase you want to use, um, really, really going hard on this. And I'm like, you're comparing a, beta of a newer version of the game that's just been built mm. to an existing retail version of the game which and i don't know this this is just common sense i imagine would have to receive some sort of update, update prior to the release on april 30th or at the same time to get them to communicate and work together yeah but you know how it's going to be framed later df how will come back and say oh after our thingo they updated it 
Uh, well, there's one yeah, thing that well, no one's it, ever it, it, really come back and talked about with Hi-Fi Rush, which is the fact that while it had that chain link fence shadow that was clearer on PlayStation than Xbox or PC, the actual input latency by default is worse just because of the way their controller works. So it's actually, it can be for some people, depending on your setup, harder to actually play the rhythm parts of that game. Like there, there's always wow. angles and things you can look at and ways you can couch your data and... and the console worry nature of what does and doesn't matter. Like resolution was everything, then resolution flip flopped, and who had the most? And we're in the post resolution era and like image quality. When you use subjective wording or different wording for the same thing across a bunch of games, at that point, it's not a scientific analysis. It's way more a subjective one. Like, how do I like how this looks and feels? Like, it's just you're just, just asking for it to not be looked at scientifically, which is what you purport it to be about anymore like, uh, this is what i don't understand who who does this when they're playing a game and having fun like what are you talking about what are you talking about what are you mad about like it doesn't compute to me at all like what what is getting you across here that if you stop and stare at these shadows the input latency is actually something that matters like when i tried the resident no, i'm talking Ford specifically demo, about the sea of thieves no one, i know yes like input latency, I, tried, I agree when i tried the yeah but but what i'm saying is it, conveniently they only decide when to look at that or not like it's it's just and it's the, the thing brit they, said the the one like a one percent delta can be a big win on frame rate but then a ten percent delta all the time is they're mostly the same it's a wash uh, on yeah, anything, on, on pretty much anything you want. Like, oh, the frame rate dips here on this version. It's really bad. But then the other version can be like, oh, the frame rate dips there, but it's mostly the same. It's like the, the consistency is what really matters when you're doing scientific mm. analysis. So if you're doing subjective, you know, wording in this stuff, it just then calls into question everything else because the way you present data always matters. So if you are presenting it, as it really matters when this guy does it and it doesn't really matter when this guy does it, then it just makes it makes it hard to really take any of it seriously or or okay. interestingly. They can't wait. They can't wait for the next generation where PlayStation's more powerful than Xbox. Because they don't they don't have to find ways to invent wins. They don't have to go out of their way. Gotta, It'll just win every time. Get a YouTube just, membership. Just, it's just message. Really oh. Odd to me. Go on, let's have a look. God Emperor Sofa King. Yes, in my opinion, Digital Foundry is one of the worst gaslighters on the console wars. Like it's weirdo energy. I am, I am, I O M. Uh, dudes are going to corners to look at shadows. <laughs> well, yeah, and it can be interesting <laughs> to just see how things run differently on different hardware. Like there, there is a the more objective, like it's objective fact. But to gain an audience and to become bigger on YouTube, especially, it's become more personality driven and subjective. And that's where I just I lose interest. Like if it's if you're just for this type of thing, giving the facts, it's very different than if you're constantly talking over it and giving opinions on how it, you feel about all of the facts. Then it becomes your the personality driven thing. And we've seen like the face thumbnails they do for their clips channel. Like it's become a different thing than it used to be. And I get it. It's the way the, the yeah. SEO driven It's not their works. choice, but really. I have to ask, like, if if an update comes out in nine days on April 30th for the Xbox versions, because from, from the looks of things, it looks like the PS5 is, is running a, a, a mythical, equivalent to the PC mythical settings, right? What if the Xbox version gets updated? Does anyone that is crying on Twitter feel kind of crazy about this now? No, because they, the, they probably don't play. They got the engagement they no, want. No, I, I, I told you because it'll be, they updated it due to the backlash. No, no, no. Come on. Like, and the other thing is as well, really? like all of these, all of these fans that are enraged at, at Microsoft's decision to, to port games to other consoles, right? And, and complaining about being left behind. No offense really genuinely but when you guys behave in the way that you do i have no doubt in my mind microsoft are more than happy to leave that kind of crap behind like no doubt in my mind that the the engaging with it and making it into this point scoring 
bizarro world console wars my plastic box is better than your plastic box the shadows are one percent better in this beta version of a game i've had for six years so now microsoft are leaving me behind and i hate them for it is insane and i i would not blame them to be like yeah we're washed we're washing our hands with this crap it's nonsense like because it is nonsense and because they are such an actual six years the games had 40 million players they are a even if they are people who have played it in the past, they are an infinitesimally small number that are being online and loud about it, and it's just not worth yeah. ever engaging with. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it just made me laugh, and it's very dumb, um, in my humble opinion. Like, I get you can feel about it how you feel, but in my opinion, it's a silly thing to be upset about. So, like, you know. Mm. Anyway. Uh, there is another reason Microsoft are enjoying this uh, experiment of four games going to third party because, as noticed by, uh, I think, Derek Strickland at Tweak Town, Microsoft has kind of taken over the PlayStation Store um, with its 25 best sellers list. Um, it has more Xbox and Microsoft-owned franchises on that top 25 best sellers list than Sony does. Um of course, so they're all the... buying games that they said sucked all these years. Well, well, you know, to be fair, Microsoft have bought a lot of these third-party behemoths. Call of Duty being one of them, um, but it's an amusing oh, I turn we were of talking events. About stuff or games? I don't really include Call of Duty in that. No, no. Um, but looking at the looking at the article of the top twenty-five that are on PlayStation. Um, Call of Duty, Overwatch 2, Sea of Thieves, Fallout 4, Minecraft, Fallout 76, and Grounded are all owned by Xbox. Hi-Fi um, Rush isn't there. Hi-Fi Rush isn't there. No, Hi-Fi Rush and Pentiment didn't sell for shit. So they Kitty were ported games, for it? nothing. No, they were ported to make Josh Sawyer and, you know, the team at... Uh, for, uh, Hi-Fi Rush, Transmedia Aspirations, Grounded Aspirations. Transmedia Aspirations, Sea of Thieves, the live service game, and also all of them make those devs very happy because their games get played by more people. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of talent retention at play when it comes to porting, like stuff like Pentiment, little passion project. You've got a legendary designer like Josh Sawyer. No, we won't port your game to other platforms. Nah, you have to remain in the doldrums working for Xbox. No, let's let's port his play. Why not? Doesn't do I don't any normally. I don't normally call these out, but I haven't. Zaychek, owned by Xbox, bought dev under Xbox. But, oh. but, I, I think he was meant to say but. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. I was completely confused for a second. Yeah. Owned by Xbox, yep. but dev under Xbox. Yep. Hmm. Um, yes, yeah. yes, Scott, I think Hi-Fi Rush will do well as a Switch 2 launch title as well. Yeah, that would do phenomenally well. That'll do well as a Switch 2. Like, at launch in Japan, I expect that game will fucking dominate. Unless it's going up against Super Mario Odyssey 2 or something like that. <laughs> launch at In launch, you do case... get people who are like, it's the launch, I'm buying a bunch. So yes. you do have a chance to yeah. get I want to buy, try everything. Yeah, no. I want to try everything. Yes, and it'll, yes, be, yes. it'll be a good price. It'll be uh, like 20, 30 bucks because it's, you know, older. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that game will be, will do extremely well on Switch 2. Mm. Very uh, well. But yeah, that's... Uh, that's about it. Uh, Nick, there's there's one last news item here that I kind of want to just chuck over to you, my man, because this is your hey, house. Yeah. So, hey, it's Fortnite. There was a Fortnite, apparently, and it, it's been like somewhat pseudo-confirmed by renowned Fortnite leakers like uh, Ricky and Ricky uh, Bobby. Hypex, I think. Shin BR, whatever it is. Uh, so there was a, a roadmap leak of Fortnite, big roadmap leak, and there was certain IP in there, one that we mentioned, Pirates of the Caribbean. I said, <gasps> it, I said a little while back, Jack Sparrow was coming to Fortnite. Um, so Pirates of the Caribbean is in this leak, bunch of other stuff. Like it looks pretty cool. There's this so fuzzy, and, and then. Yes, it is weird. I, I still find that odd it's that we're in a world a where... Yeah. 
I find it weird that we're in a world where all our phones have like bare minimum 1080p, if not 4K cameras, yet you continue to see footage everywhere in photos that look like Nokia 6610 footage. I find that baffling. Anyway, um, there was also from Sheena BR um, saying... A new Marvel season for Fortnite is rumoured to be in development. The season will likely involve Fantastic Four. Uh, Fantastic Four as a comic book cover involving them can be seen on Epic Games' roadmap. If accurate, the season is set to be released August 2024. So yes, Fantastic Four was another one that was part of my big list that I did a few months back when I got told that I could just leak the entire list of everything I had. Fantastic Four was in there. Um, so, yeah, so it looks like there's a lot of cool stuff coming. I hope this new Marvel season, if it's true, is as good as... Because the last Marvel season was my favourite season of Fortnite ever. The current Greek mythology season is my second favourite season ever. It's really, really good at the moment. Um, but, yes, this league has a bunch of stuff. Metallica coming to Fortnite Festival. Uh, we already have Lady Damn. Gaga and she's in there. Billie Eilish, Snoop Dogg. Uh, I, I I may have heard about another music artist coming to Fortnite, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed Sheena to mention Easton. it yet, so I won't. Yeah, Sheila E. Um, who else have we got? We've got Bruce some rocket racing stuff in here that I can't tell because this photo is so blurry. Um, yeah, I took the photo Fortnite down. I couldn't see anything here. on it. Yeah, Fort Nightmares is here, and there's a there's a Star Wars. It looks like Star Wars is back again, um, but that's in Fortnite Lego versus Battle Royale. They're gonna bring back it's Mary Sue version six, Ray, and she can instantly kill everyone on the map. It's broken up into versions, so they've got on this roadmap they've got Rocket Racing, Festival, Battle Royale, and Lego. So the the Pirates of the Caribbean is under the Battle Royale part. So yeah. Um, as always, the future looks very bright for us Fortnite fans. Um, so that is the Fortnite leak. But me being me, I felt very chuffed to see two of my um, leaks on there, which was good. Yeah. Good. Nice season confirmation. Yep. Why yep. not? My Why Fortnite, not? My Fortnite guy strikes again. No. Oh. And I see a comment yeah, in the yeah. chat, like if the if those games had physical releases, they would have done better. And if only enough, Target has pretty much said we are getting rid of all discs, movies, games, yeah, no. everything, all gone. One of the major chains that carries them, Best Buy is already doing it. Like physical is just not a big thing. It's really not. If it was, they they'd love to sell them and make money, but they're not selling them and making money, so they're giving up. Just not worth the yeah, retail like space. The, the pre predominantly. The majority of people like you, you, whoever you are listening and watching might be really love your physical discs and your physical and DVDs movies are legitimately better as physical. They just look better. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yes. But the convenience right, and everything is the better. convenience of digital is just winning out. It's just mm -hmm. the nature of the world as, as our, as our internet speeds increase, as the stability increases, it's just easy. Hello, my daughter, my, like I thought about it the other day. So Taylor Swift dropped her new album mm. on Friday. Yep. And my daughter's like, oh, new Taylor Swift album. And I just, I thought about it and I'm like, wait, she won't have to buy it. Nope. Just go listen you just to it. stream it through Apple TV Plus. Like, uh, Apple TV Plus. That's fucking cat. Through Apple Music. We just stream it straight through Apple Music. She doesn't have to line up and go right. buy it. She doesn't have to. What the hell was that? I muted his Why mic. Cat just unplugged all my monitors. If I don't know. I muted you, Jesse. It's yeah. okay. Because you were yelling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, the cat unplugged every monitor. So, cool. You're back. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm just looking at the screen and we're all gone. <laughs> all, my, all my monitors turned off, yeah, so yeah. everything just disappeared. But now it's back. Well, amazing. I'm going to kick you. I didn't kick him. I wanted to. <laughs> He has, his, he has oh, these little spring toys, and he springed it directly into the computer five times so far in the show. And and then that time, he just swipe it, and he knocked, like, three cables out. Thankfully, not the power just one. Melting. <sighs> yeah, that's good. Melting. But, uh, yeah, you're right, Nick. Like, I, I think the last physical album I bought was um, Tool released an album. Um, 
and it wasn't even the most recent album. It was back in 2005. It was the last CD I ever bought. Boom, boom. Mm. Boom, boom. Like, I just yeah. don't need it anymore. I don't need all the clutter. I don't need it. I have it all on a hard drive or on my streaming services, right? Yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah. I Anyways, services. Um, we've got a rumor mill coming up, but before that, we do. it's time for Name a Game. Oh, we didn't break down Indie World. Nintendo oh, Indie did World. You, did you want to? This is an Xbox podcast. What's wrong with the, you? Look, the main thing? It, there's not... two things that matter. Really? Okay, yes. Go on, man. Let's yeah, see go if Jesse and I are lying on this. There was one game I saw in that Indie World that I was like, oh boy, why couldn't I review that Ninja Turtles game? <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's the... Well, oh, I mean, okay. go get an Apple Arcade. Um, but no, the two I was talking about Wait, that matter for so, us as yes, yeah, an Apple Arcade game. The two that matter for us as an Xbox it? site are Steam World Heist Two coming to Game Pass in August, and Little Kitty Big City getting its date for Game Pass on May 9th. And I'll be reviewing at least that one. I don't know, but we'll see about Steam World uh, Heist Two. Oh my God! I already have this Turtles game on my Mac. Yeah, there you go. So your it's the camera same game. frame rate died. You're like twelve frames a second. Nick. Weird. Oh, he must have been tapped okay, out. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Max suck. I forgot. Sorry. Okay. But yes. No, it's because I started the game. I, I when I saw <laughs> the footage of that <laughs> Turtles game, when I saw the footage of that Turtles game, I'm like, is that the Turtles game that I have on Apple Arcade? So it is, it is that same game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so no, it's, it's just it's getting Switch. off wow. the Apple store finally. It's actually a really good game. I played it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I remember actually, people liking well, it. There it's, you go. And it is a the TMNT roguelike. But yeah. Outside of it that, is, it was it cool seemed game. like a fine show on the whole. It's always nice to see that a lot of the stuff because the Nindy shows end up being the ones that have the most exclusives, like games that are only announced mm. for Switch at the start and then eventually work their way to other platforms. Um, but yeah, so Steamworld Heist Two was announced out of nowhere. We got a date on one Game Pass game, so it was worth it. Did I read that uh, there's an R-rated Ronin Turtles movie coming? Yeah. That's a fucking choice, man. That's like... You know yeah, about the right. last Ronin? Yeah, the yeah, turtles, I know. Yeah, Ronin? but the fact that Do they're going to make it R-rated, like, glorious. Do you know which turtle it is? No, I've, I've, no I'm not into it, but I'm... Oh, really? It's is it Leonardo, like, presumably? Michelangelo, the, the other turtle. three are dead. Mm-hmm. The other three are dead. And he ate and them and absorbed the their powers like the one with Jet Li. Oh, and okay. now Michelangelo's okay. gone dark. Oh, gone sign dark. me up. All right. Dark Alangelo. I'm, I'm in. But now it I'm is, in. in fact, time for Name a Game. Name a Game. One. Boop, 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 boop. Mm-hmm. That's right, folks. It is time for Name a Game. Now, if you're here for the rumor mill, that's right, you're going to have to sit through this one, but try and have fun, okay? If you're new here, Name a Game is a game show that we play every week as we battle for our wonderful patrons. Um, And we do this so that we can let them win games. So Nick and I act as a champion for our incredible patrons. We pick them at random every week, and whoever wins gets to get a game code off of Jesse. It's all lovely and nice and brilliant. Um, If you want to be one of those people, you can support us on Patreon by heading to patreon.com forward slash xbox era nick who are we playing for this week okay i am playing for one bad mother oh i almost want to let you win because you know obm god love him you are playing for abraham esquivel i mean with a name like that i've got to win so another a so another ape two abes Abes. the two abes one abes one abe enters Two apes enter, one yep. ape leaves. Okay. One ape? Yep. Uh, My goodness. <laughs> it, that did sound like you said ape. <laughs> I did not say, but I meant ape. Um, Jesse, what's the theme this week? In honor of Fallout, it is games that had shows or movies. Ooh. There's more. If you go to how anime, deep there's like 500 of them. But yeah, I tried to not do too much anime because you guys wouldn't get it that much. Is this, I wonder is if this... he's going to go deep cut on this. Is this games based on films or films based on no. games? I tried to or focus games. more that games that then got a film or TV adaption, not the other TV way around. Show, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That, that was okay. my focus. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Let's do this. 
I reckon I'll do okay in this one. Make sure audio good. All right. Number one is two words. Put them in the private chat too. Jesus Christ, I know. It's a pain in the ass. I've got like 17 <laughs> fucking things open. You yell it every time. I, I just realized there's going to be so many U Bowl films in this fucking mix. I was this waiting. Is, uh, I was yeah. waiting for them all. Number one is Uwe Terrace oh, okay. Troopers. Terrace Troopers. Terrace Trooper. Oh, I put Troopers. Terrace, terrace oh, no, trooper. Troopers. Terrace Trooper. Trooper or Troopers? Trooper. Just Trooper. Okay. okay. Terrace Trooper. <sighs> Uh, and it oh, got a movie or a TV show. Fuck away, cat. Take you out. <laughs> you don't have a toy over here. Or it's under my computer. I'm even angrier. I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I think this is... Sick of uh, Wing Commander. Incorrect. Fuck. Well, shit. Buzzing's not showing. Let me fix that. There we go. Terrace <laughs> Trooper. I think I know the second word. I just don't know the first word. Well, you got a free guess, John, uh, Nick. Go for it. Yeah, but Terrace. No one in chat's got it. Hmm. That's what Nick's something, waiting for. Something soldier. Mm. Something soldier. Terrace Trooper. Something soldier. But I don't know. I mean, game. well, the, well, the a movie or a TV show. There's a movie called. Oh, I don't know timer. if this is giving it to you. There's a movie called Universal Soldier, but Terrace doesn't really know Universal. But Universal's, the Universal Soldier is not a video game, so based on a video hey, game. No, not chat. to mind. We'll get it in the next three, two. It's not a video game. One. Okay, Six. you just start the timer. Let's see if he gets it suddenly in the next 10 seconds. I already ran the timer. It just ends up. Oh, okay. Street Fighter. Little Street game. You might not have heard of it before. Trooper, fighter. Street fighter, terrorist trooper. Wow. How did it, okay. What? Yeah. Street fighter, terrorist trooper. It really wasn't hard. A terrorist is a, a type of street. A trooper is a soldier. Yeah, they are a fighter. A soldier would also work for fighter. <sighs> you not getting an easy one doesn't hurt me. A terrorist okay. is a type of street. A trooper is someone who fights. Deal with it. Okay, well, we can't argue. We can't argue with him. He's the host of the game show. I am so, not reaching uh, here. Next Apple, one. They are literally synonyms in the <laughs> Merriam Webster, Merriam Webster website. You fight with really? those pompous shits. That's a <laughs> terrible one, Matt. You're a terrible one. Okay, number two, <laughs> two words. Those words being caucus controller. This is this caucus. Is, this is a tricky one on how I'm using the word. As in, like a caucus. political caucus. Yes. Caucus oh controller. God. Not a good synonym. Caucus. It's not up to me. It is a synonym. It's directly <laughs> from the dictionary. Controller. As soon as I heard caucus, I'm like, that's a political thing, isn't it? A mm -hmm. caucus? It's a political faction. A political. Uh, oh, fuck. Did I just guess this? Did I just guess this? I'm not giving you answers. I Sick fucking weak commander. Correct. <laughs> Amazing. A caucus is a wing of a, and then a, a controller is. A oh commander. mate, I was just thinking I can't be wrong again, can I? <laughs> it was pretty funny when you said wing commander on the first one. When number two was that? Oh wow. Okay. Blimey. Oh my god, there's so much text on this one. Okay. Yeah, this okay. is one. This is a bad one. Yell at me for these oh. types. Don't yell at me for the ones that just literally make sense in the dictionary, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, I'll give it to you oh. guys first because it's long and stupid. There you go. It is exhale dash cold dash novitiate colon boundary dash joggers. <laughs> um, sorry. What is is that all um, one word with the dashes or is it three words? Yes, yeah, so that's two words. This game is right? two words. Cyberpunk Edge Runners yeah. is the name. I said it out loud. God damn it. I haven't done that in a while. I literally read it. I was going because I went to count the words. Cyberpunk went... edge rushers. I buzzed. I buzzed in. Correct. No, he said cyberpunk edge rushers. Cyberpunk edge rushers. Nick gets it. You said runners with a Z. No, that's mm. a runners. You said rushers. What's a rusher? Yeah, you were laughing too much, John. Sorry. Cyberpunk. Oh my. Okay. All yeah, right. That one's that one's count, cute. As I went to count the. Uh, words i just read the name instead <laughs> hold on I'm, I'm trying to work that out exhale cold sigh. novice shake sigh 
Burr cold. Burr cold. No Cyber. If you look up the oh. actual word for what punk oh. means, no bitch. And then edge runners. Yeah, it works. Wow. Oh, I've done Amazing. it before. Yeah, edge runners. Though. I was not yeah, right. Accidentally just said the name. Don't worry, I've got a bunch more. Okay. Edge runners. Incorrect. <laughs> John gets a free guess. There you go. It is <laughs> okay. partnerless, partnerless in the Germany's hyphen best hyphen TV hyphen show hyphen on hyphen Netflix. Three words or four words. Sorry. What the fuck? Four words. Mm -hmm. Oh man, partnerless in the Germany's best TV show. Nope. God damn it. Sick. Alone in the dark. Correct. God, Dark was such a good show. I don't think the follow-up got a second season. Though. I've never seen Dark, but my oh. parents told me I should watch it. So. It's almost like single? What's and, I, single? and I was like, Why? What, is it? what is it? Oh, it's German. And that's the only oh. reason I know the I answer. See the cat <laughs> I was like, partner or something in single? Something single? Yeah, I was like, because I, cause I knew German show. Dark, he knocked so. his toy under the friggin' this thing behind me, so now he can't get to it, and he's very sad. Nope. Shit, nope. How the hell did you get that out? Oh my god, just lock the cat out. <laughs> Mine. I have it. Now he's running around looking for it. I can't lock him out. It's a townhouse. There's like... It's all open. There's no locking. Yeah. Lock him in the bathroom then. Alright, I need a good one for a potential win. Give me a second. I need to find out how to make this fit. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> it's three words total, but... Making those three words was a chore. Was, was that. There you go. It is additional hyphen towering over end of a website hyphen flying rat complete destruction. Three words. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? <laughs> additional towering over. Is one End word. of a website. End of hey, a website. Check out it right away. What is it, Nick? <laughs> check Additional out it. towering oh, over. I'm, I'm, I just received a coffee. I have not been concentrating. End of a website. Flying rat. How many words is this? Four? Three. <sighs> Three. Additional hyphen towering over. End of a website hyphen flying rat. Complete destruction. The only part I know of that is the flying rat. That's the only part I know of it, is the flying rat. That's it. Oh, okay. Remember, it has to be a movie or TV show. Yeah. Yes, it's a movie. John, if you know it, you should try and get it. Well, well, well. F flying rat, Nick's just given me that. Um, Nick. Oh, he's, he's going for it. Is it Mortal Kombat Annihilation? Correct. More oh, okay. Well, I'm glad I didn't Bat. guess. I was thinking flying rat, Batman. Like, <laughs> no, it wouldn't be Batman because I thought Batman at first as well. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, oh, wait, there are Batman movies that came before the game, so it has to be something else. I'm like, Bat is in the word. And yes. Yeah, see, that works. Additional. More. More. Towering more. over. Tall. You're Towering saying. over. Tall. Yeah. Uh, okay. See, you're not always fucking stupid. They're rarely stupid. But you always are, John. All right, next one is. I'm just going through the long ones because John might win, so we gotta give Nick a chance. In the designation of a of the monarch, an amulet encirclement story. <laughs> How Sick. many words is this? I know name? what this is. Go for it. I know what this is. This, I believe, is a Jason Statham movie, um, and I think it is. In the name of the king, a dungeon siege tale. Correct. I've Fucking get in, it. It's so. an Uwe Boll dungeon of. siege movie. You really? It was infamous for being one of the I've worst. Never heard of it. Yeah, it, it did. It did. I think it was like 2007, 2008, something like that. It wasn't. I'm sure it had Statham in it. But yeah. Never heard yes, of it. I knew Obelette would be a hard word for dungeon, but everything else. The in the name of a monarch should just give it away if you if you know it. So 
Yeah. Never heard of the game or the movie. Oh, Dungeon Siege? There's been a bunch of them. There was like three, and the third one was really loved, if I remember. All right. No. We'll get through the next ones for funsies, as John has already won once again, unfortunately. The next one is two words. Those words being potentiality pebble. Potentiality pebble? Again, <laughs> that guy's driving you insane. A movie or TV show? Potentiality, Potentiality pebble. pebble. He hasn't put this one in the in the private chat. Yeah, he so hasn't put it in the private. I chat. did hear that right then. Potentiality. Potentiality pebble. pebble. Um. Potentiality. But it's a movie or pebble. TV show. Fuck. I don't know, man. Potentiality Pebble. I mm, that's that's a uh, Nick loves this game. One of his favorites. Desperate for a new one. Pot Potentiality Pebble. Mm. Oh shit, Nick. Wait, how is this first word power? Power stone. Potential like, power. Like a, the potentiality of something. Yeah, it kind of works in a physics. I don't know, I, I'm saying, but Power Stone didn't get a movie or a TV show. Hmm. It didn't. It had an anime. It did? Yeah. Oh, if you start going into the Japanese stuff, there's like 4,000 shows. I didn't do it that heavy because really? I know they don't always come over here, but yeah, it didn't. Wow. Power Stone got an anime. I mm -hmm. would have never guessed that. Wow. Fuck, that game was good. Power Stone 1 and 2 are just incredible arena fighting games. And the only thing you have on modern consoles, I don't even know if it's on PlayStation. I know it's on Steam. I own it on Steam and I own it on Xbox. It's called Last Fight. It is a literal Power Stone clone made by a French developer. If you care about achievements, then don't buy it because the achievements are completely and utterly broken with a lot of them. They just don't work. Which has pissed me off to no end. On Steam, who cares about achievements on Steam? Get it on Steam. But on Xbox, the achievements are completely broken. Good. On Last Fight. Should break all but of it them. is a good game. It's a Power Stone clone. Wow. Okay. All right. Next one for funsies is another two word one. One of the easiest I've ever done. Those words being Furious Fowls. Sick. Angry Birds. Correct. Oh, yeah. I was going to say something with the chickens. Now we're into the ones that I just scrape together when I'm... In case you guys don't get the early ones, so they're not very good. You can you can yell at me about these ones, chat. This next one is... <laughs> paired Flying Hyphen Lizard. <coughs> <laughs> what? Paired as in... Oh, okay, you put it in the private. This is two words. Two words. Paired. <sighs> We'll call this the last one. They've got a movie. Really got a movie or hey, a TV show. Mark got it. Paired. Got a movie or a TV show. Mm -hmm. Had a movie in the nineties. Paired is in. Oh wait. Nick. Pair. Double Dragon. Correct. Paired. Go on, do, paired. do the last one. I want to see how ridiculous it is. No, it's just. It's just okay. It's one word. That word being obscured. 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 Obscured? A movie it's a word that's show. really it's an incredibly popular TV show um, on Netflix. Couldn't really think of another way to say it the way. I couldn't think of a great oh, way for this uh, one. Oh, what's that? Obscured. It's, it's the, What's that one yeah, based on the it. bloody... It's new. It's new, isn't it? Isn't yeah, it new based on League two. of Legends? Yeah, and it's got Ella Prunella as the main character. Nick. Arcane. Uh, it's the Correct. one based on League of Legends. Yeah. Oh. I was like, ah, it's not that oh. good of a one, but whatever. Can I just ask, how is potentiality power? I don't know. Ask Merriam-Webster. I put in the word power and potentiality was in the list oh, of less, synonyms. Less potentiality... I go to dictionary.com and I just said, or I type into Bing chat. What is another word for 
And then it gives you a list of all these things from all these different sources, and one of them was potentiality. You got it. it means it must be good. A potentiality I've got the, I've got the pebble part. noun, a power Stone. or a quality that exists and is capable of being developed. The word power I get right it. in there. There you go. Yeah, I'm not. They, they, if they're always just make perfect sense, it's too easy. Again, I got them all after I'd lost anyway. Yeah, I got them all after I'd lost anyway. Yeah, can't always have them just be um, like they've got to be kind of stupid to make it a little harder. Else, they're all too easy. They're all furious fouls, and everyone rolls their eyes. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, that's done. Yep, that's I'm, it, isn't it? Yes, I'm getting us off desktop audio. And okay. you guys can turn off the music if you ever want to in the future, because I got a million things to click through, but I got it. Uh, <sighs> now uh, I have the music playing through RBS. No, no, you, you can hear it because I'm playing it through StreamYard. Oh, right. Okay. Um, but good game, good game. Uh, congratulations to uh, Abraham Esquivel. Esquivel. Uh, if you reach out to Jesse on the Discord, or the forums, that's discord.gg forward slash Xbox Zero or forum.xboxzero.com. Uh, he will present you with a list of games. Or maybe he'll just give you a random code that he thinks you'll like. Who knows? But reach out, because you can. Anyway, we haven't been Magnum, able to hit... Magnum, it's, it's not time to retire Name a Game, but what I have thought about is having a spin on Name a Game, and we'll give it a different name, where instead of Jesse having to go through all that hell that he does... We do a version where we, John and I, have to get the year that a game came out. So Jesse says Mass Effect, and then we have to get say which what year it came out. Oh seven. Jesse says Rocket Knight Adventures, and we have to say the year it came out. And whoever gets closest to the year gets it right. Also stolen from the same radio show. Oof, I would suck at that. I have bad memory. But at least years Jesse doesn't have to sit there times. thinking of things. All he has to do is have the list of games and there's the year. It's nice and easy for him. So it's like half the work. That's oh, I true. did that in like 20 minutes. Sorry, man. I was just trying to make your life fucking easier. <laughs> <laughs> you have never so once in your today. life tried to do that. I did a review of a game, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> Praise him. <laughs> 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 All right, it's been a while since we've heard this wonderful theme again. tune. <laughs> <laughs> this wonderful theme tune for the rumor mill. It's the rumor mill. We've never heard that before. It's the rumor mill. Things change, we can't be sure. It's the rumor mill. You know they may not come true. Era podcast is not responsible for websites presenting these rumors as facts. Okay, we need music we had, for the we rumor had a super mill chat, but maybe I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it uh, after the rumor mill. Risk it's super chat. Rumor mill. I've got to be very careful. I've got to be very careful with this one. It's not Fortnite. <laughs> That's okay. It's not, not Fortnite. This is it's spicy. Fortnite. This is it's a spicy just, again, meat remember, to bone. This is the rumor mill. It's stuff I hear. Yeah, yeah. Please don't yeah. take this as confirmation of everything. It's not the announcement bill. It's just stuff I hear and I share with all of you when I'm allowed to. So, you know, we know that PlayStation has a new CEO at the moment. I, I think the CEO might be a little more open to certain things. So what, what, what I've heard, I'm just, again, it's just a rumor that I've heard, is that there may be some very, very early, very early preliminary discussions about the possibility of Helldivers 2 coming to Xbox. It's That's interesting. It's interesting, isn't it? Because mm. like when I played Helldivers 2, I'm like, this is the most Xbox feeling game that PlayStation oh. have ever made. It's doing very well. I mean, it's doing very well. It's, it's an Helldivers absolute 2. blast. I would recommend everyone to try it out if you've got a good group of mm. friends to roll with it is brilliant fun um it's but one again, of those rare occasions that, live that service mean, done right please, remember what i said though it doesn't mean it's coming I, I just said there's very early discussions what i've heard is that there's some very early discussions about it it mm. they could all fall to pieces it could all 
they might not come to an agreement on something. Who the hell knows? I don't know how this shit works. I'm just saying that what I've heard is that there's some very early discussions about the possibility of Helldivers 2 coming to Xbox. That would That's be all interesting. I, I would love that. I think the more players that that it game has... It would be cool. Like, it's great. a cool game. Um, with friends. It's not... It's a little far less cool on your own. <laughs> yeah, you need a friends, crew. A cool you need game. a crew to roll with. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I would. Uh, I would definitely be telling all of my Xbox playing buddies to pick that up, like without a shadow of a doubt. That it would be excellent. I'm just praying now that that doesn't get fucking framed as oh Nick said it's coming to Xbox. I'm like, well, no, I didn't. That's actually not what I said. But yeah. Um, that'd be cool if that happens. Ho- hopefully, if those discussions are going on, they can come to a um an agreement on that. Because mm. then, look, just like how Sea of Thieves is doing well on PlayStation, I think Hell Divers would do super well on Xbox. It it is. It's a very Xbox game. Yeah, Hell Divers. One hundred percent. It is. And it is feels and looks and everything like an Xbox game. So I think it would do very well on Xbox. I'd love it. I would love it. I would highly do doubt game. Do it. Yes. PlayStation, Arrowhead, please please actually make that happen. Because uh, one, the drama of meltdowns would be mm, tasty. And two, uh, it's a great game and more people should be able to play it. I know, but when I when I got told this, I got a bit annoyed because I had bought it on PlayStation and I would have preferred <laughs> to have had it on Xbox. My yeah. Man, I would have waited. Like, I can wait. I'm not in a rush. I can wait and play it with a better controller. Yeah, like well, I I play on PC with an Xbox pad, but uh, yeah, yeah, it is it is an absolutely cracking game. Um, yeah, there you go. Wow, that uh, that is definitely a spicy rumor mill, Nick. I'm looking forward to seeing that. That will give all the SEO chasers Get something out to write about tomorrow. Get yeah, taken yeah, out yeah, of context, yeah, yeah. clipped and twisted. My absolutely. words changed. Absolutely. And then when it's not out next week, you lied. You fucking, you're a dickhead. <laughs> can't wait can't wait for all of that yeah yeah thrilling thrilling this will be all the xbox Um, fans as they're super happy and cheering on nick and then in like six months (laughs) if it hasn't happened then it just turns into Uh, yeah i know i am going to call this out though jason hamilton xbox Series youtube member in the chat says hey guys just on catch up and saw the shout out. Nice thing to do, gents. Must yes. appreciate it. I'm very sorry, Jason, that we missed your super chat. Occasionally, last week. very Nick sorry. So is I kind made of sure nice. when so when <laughs> I saw it, when I was doing the timestamps, I saw your super chat while I was doing the timestamps. I was like, holy shit, we did not read that super chat. So I took a screenshot, saved it on my Mac, my M M1 Ultimate MacBook Pro, and um. Wanted to make sure to read it out this week. So I'm very sorry we missed that last week. Yeah. But yes. Yeah, I think I did reply at the time, but yeah, I don't think we read it out. So You don't care enough to actually Lucky call you. it out, John. You hate our patrons and our YouTube hey, subs I and everything. I don't hate our patrons. Mm. Speaking mm. about our wonderful patrons, mm. <laughs> thanks for the segue. Um, we love you guys. You make Xbox Era possible day in, day out um, through your incredible support. Um, and we wouldn't be able to do as much as we do without you. Like if you go... Like, just cast your eye over. If you're watching this show right now, maybe it's your first time here, go cast your eye over the YouTube channel. Go cast your eye over xboxhero.com. It's a genuinely nice, regularly updated, awesome website. And uh, we love you guys for it. Um, but one of the perks that our wonderful patrons get is to ask us community questions every week. We're going to dive into those right now. If you want that opportunity, head to patreon.com forward slash xboxhero. You can support the team for as little as a cup of coffee a month it, and it does help believe me it really does um one note to executive producer top i have done everything i can think of to fix your integration with our forums um it's really not playing ball and i'm not sure why um but i think your your theory is correct um we have to wait for an update on the actual integration from the the discourse devs so i don't know when that's going to be but if you ever have a community question you want on the show please just drop it to me on a dm in the forums or on discord and we will take care of it um with that being said nick let's dive into those community keep seeing people talk about gears collection i don't know how many times (laughs) i need to apologize i revealed the gears collection before dev had even started look that is why 
like unless she thought development was like six months, like I am sorry. I don't know how many more. I've apologized to my source a hundred times. I don't know how many times I need to say. So I revealed it too early. My bad. Like I am sorry, but it's still on the way. Not backing down. Special Nick confirms. Until my source suddenly turns around and says, yeah. <laughs> like, Grimace face. <laughs> and then I'm like, bang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Darkwing Duck. Uh, yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, we, yeah, we're up to community questions, yeah? Yep. Yes, we are, mate. Uh, <laughs> we are. That was my okay. whole spiel. <laughs> yep. Uh, Jesse Brother. Jesse Brother. Uh, what up, Jess? Nick? More on you later. John, very Sounds good ominous. and rather accurate review of Harold Halibut. And I can respect your reason for not playing more Alan Wake 2. Speaking of that game, I have successfully finished, get it, thin? <laughs> finished Alan Wake 2 myself, as well as the excellent Senoir's sacrifice for the first time. I can't wait for the sequel. I couldn't give a rat's took us if it's 30 because I'm not a dummy from down under. No, I care about 60. <laughs> Speaking of said dummy, uh, I'm pretty sure that's the wrong spelling of dummy as well, isn't it? I've also now seen Dune Part 2, which was incredible. And not only didn't make me tired, I couldn't sleep until I had watched it again. Meaning your taste in movies is inexplicably even worse than your taste in video games. Well done, dummy. I'd have a question, but I'm sure you have already spoken for at least... (laughs) So ciao for now. Man, Jesse just said he didn't like Con Air and Face Off. That fucking yeah, invalidates just about I, anything. To be fair, Trav was backing him up in the chat. Yeah. Like, you know, we the, don't the, like the, dumb the, movies the, that much. The, the Norris brothers fun. sticking yeah. together here. Yeah, man. Like, we can't do much. Oh, shit. This. Yes. Oh, sorry, Risk It. Super chat. Risk It. Super chat. I said I'd do it after the rumor mill. I didn't do it. Uh, Risk It has a super chat. Two ninety nine. See you in the grand final, Nick. So Risk It's getting very excited because his terrible football team has just won two games in a row. And they look okay. So I think he's just getting somewhat carried away. My team, the Sleeping Giant, because we were playing like rat shit for the first three weeks, we've now won three games in a row. So we've just awoken now. Mm. Uh, and the competition has been put on notice. Um, Thrilling. R- Risket's team has won a couple of games and he's obviously getting very excited and carried away. I wonder if he'll come over from WA to come watch West Coast play Collingwood in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? Three weeks. We play West Coast in three weeks. Marvel Stadium. Out, we've turned an entire stadium. So Marvel sponsors one of our stadiums down here. It was a massive 10-year deal. And wow. when you walk into Marvel Stadium, it's great for kids. There's like there's a giant Hulkbuster. There's a life-sized Hulkbuster in this stadium that my son took a photo under. And like he's like this big and the Hulkbuster's like ginormous. <laughs> And there's wow. like all these cool kids uh, play equipment that's all Marvel themed. And there's all, ah, oh, it's so cool, Marvel Stadium. Shit to watch footy at. But the actual stadium is cool in how they've Marvel themed it. It's cool. Anyway, I'm seeing Dorito Popes in the chat. Uh, next question. Hi, Thumbjig. To circle around the helmet-related thing with Master Chief, as far as people hated it when the Chief kept his helmet off a lot, do you think that in future game of Halo or whatever title it is, pretty sure it's going to be called Halo, mate, uh, that do you gents think that we will get a face reveal in the future game of Halo? Your gents take? No. No. P.S. Damn, I anticipated that Neo was going to voice Shadow and in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Do you gents think Shadow will say damn in the movie? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you'll say damn, but he's definitely going to go, whoa. whoa. <laughs> he has to go, whoa. No, they will not reveal my face in the Halo game. It's never going to happen. Because I can't afford the ambulance bills. They already have in <laughs> cutscenes. They've shown John's face when he was a kid and teenager. A lot. And they showed his eyes at the end of Halo 4. Yeah, as an adult, yes. they showed the eyes. eyes. But, but they've and shown the kid dark face. And shadowy. Before. Looks like a white guy. Yeah. Hey, uh, man, Halo 4. Still visually just... Yeah, gorgeous. Holy shit. See what happens when you have really super talented people that know the hardware on your team? 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it was at the cost, at great cost to the game's yes, expansiveness. Yes, to the core of what Halo was known for. But that's that's what happens. They're the sacrifices you make. Yep. Yep. True, true, true. Yep. That the first is- age of Halo 4, though, was really good. Real yeah, Metroid Prime vibes and just... That's the, that's the Halo stuff I like. Yeah. That's cool. Shit like the next that. one down, by the way, if you're wondering, is Omen, from what I can see. I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Omen. So Sea of Thieves announced that it has surpassed 40 million players on Xbox and PC. What about I find... What I find interesting about it is that in February this year, that number was just 35 million. So my question is, what do you think caused this massive growth of 5 million <laughs> additional Sea of Thieves players between February and April? So... We, we've apparently had it confirmed that it's not PlayStation 5 players, allegedly. Yeah. So I guess that massive growth was achieved, I don't know. I, I think Fudged in the part, numbers? No, I think in part people heard it was coming and more people thought they would try it because, okay, it's a big game. Let's go give it a try. Did any um, big streamers start something. playing they it again? They fudged the numbers. Big streamers, yeah. Yeah. Because it's coming to the most popular platform out there. PC? Outside of PC. Oh. Outside of PC. I snuck mm. it in just in the last moment. It's, it's, Mike, it's um, Microsoft. They would have found a way to fudge the numbers. <laughs> um, yeah. I reckon. But yeah, we kind of already went went through that omen. Love you. But yeah. Yes, no. I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. What, like legitimately have no idea. I, I keep getting Carlos and Jason asking me to play that game and I'm just like, I have no fucking interest in playing it's that It's such game. a good game, bro. It has no cutscenes. It's such too. a fun game. Not one. No cutscenes, zero. You said yourself that they have not changed how that game feels since the start. The it core is, it the game start. Game. At the start, FPS it was now. 30. It was 30 at the start. It's now all the gameplay and feel is still the same. So in which case, I will not play it. Because what I did not like about that game was how it felt. At it 30. feels much combat, better at 60 and 120. Combat was sucky. Um, it's just I didn't like it. It's such a laugh out loud time with mates, honestly. It's worth it. Just go on a brigantine and have some fun. I don't know. At 120 FPS. You'll have a good time, I promise. Anyway, you, or you two can get good on the keyboard. I do have... I've been collecting all the DLC for it. So I've got all the banjo stuff and I've got the one that came with the purple controller. I've got all that stuff. Okay. Next question. Townsend. Evening, gents. With trophies coming to Ghost of Tsushima on PC, can you see a PlayStation launcher coming soon? If we're entering a world where Xbox and PlayStation have their own launches with games coming to PC day and date, can you see a higher percentage of gamers turning to PC next gen instead of consoles? Yes and yes. So I had mentioned, kind of accidentally, I think, on an episode we had Diana on, that Sony was doing their own PC launcher where they were looking at cross-buy, cross-save. I can't remember if I mentioned trophies or not. But seeing this thing with Ghost of Tsushima makes me believe that that launcher is probably coming sooner rather than later. Um. I assume they're just trying to make sure everything works properly and get everything right and maybe get the timing right. Like maybe they want to wait for the PS6 and have it just all be fresh and new. I don't know. Um, I I, I never heard about timing. Um, But my guess is this is laying all the foundation for all that stuff, making sure it all works and then they'll go bang and just have it all launch. But yeah, that's cool. Having trophies there is good. That's really cool. Yeah, um, I, I think PC is going to end up being like, I think consoles are old men machines, really, for us. Like a lot of kids, as they grow up, they see people playing, yeah, you know, Minecraft and they with all the mods, and, and they're like, why can't I do that? And it's like, uh, you know, I get that from my son all the time. I, like, I could definitely see PC gaming getting a massive boost next gen. Because 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 even even anecdotally, even anecdotally, I see a lot more kids I know jumping into PC gaming and being more interested in PC gaming. Young kids, like I'm talking young, young, 12, yeah, 10, yeah. Yep. like wanting gaming PCs. So I could totally see a situation where if someone releases a more reasonably priced Steam Deck 
uh, equivalent, like a, a handheld PC, that could do very, very well. More reasonably priced because most kids these days aren't, their parents aren't going to pay $1,000 for something they look. Because remember, a parent looks at the Steam Deck and is like, oh, it's a Switch. $1,000, $1,200 for a Switch, no way. So if someone comes along with a reasonably priced handheld gaming PC, I could see something like that doing really well in the future. And I'm not talking about a portable Xbox. I'm talking about an actual, like, a handheld PC. Yeah. Um, but yes. Well, yeah, the, the, of the, course, the, you have to go that angle. The Tom Warren thing was, like, it would be... So it's an Xbox in your hand, but it has access to the Windows kernel, essentially, and it just can access your PC games in like a GOG format and just open them without ever surfacing Windows, which would be the way to, you know, maintain security, which I know has been a big thing for them as they've never had the Xbox One or series consoles get hacked, which has been a good thing. As much as we all like piracy because companies like Nintendo are real shit about preservation, if Microsoft is going to keep putting everything on PC, it's already there forever anyways. Games with servers, it doesn't friggin' matter. Unless they are nice and patch them to be offline like they're still supposed to do with Redfall. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it would be awesome and the thing that would make people happy because people just want to have all their shit everywhere that works with everyone. Mm. True story. And uh, to quote the wonderful Cheeseworks... Like the stream, please. You know, like it helps mm. us out. Just slide your thumb across, hit that like button. You know, maybe roll that mouse if you're on a desktop. But if, if you're those you that on don't phone, like me or out. don't like Nick or don't like sick, it makes us so mad if you hit that like button. Better yeah, don't not do, do it, it, you jerks. Oh, and the dislike really ruins button everything. really hurts everything. Yeah, it, it definitely come and doesn't give, help. See, he's come up and blind riot. Mm. <laughs> I don't think I was. Ever, was I? Oh, I think I did get in there. It was me and John. I don't know if it was ever Nick that were just the worst. And yeah, no, I'm he the best. Agree, well, he agreed with you, Nick. I shouldn't be on camera. Yeah, I'm the best. <laughs> okay, 10K. It's 2024, the 20th anniversary of the last episode of Friends. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, it is. And uh, 2004. Rest in peace. I was Matthew 24 Perry. years old in 2004. Wow. When, so when Halo 2 came out, I was... God, Halo 2 came out the year the last Friends episode came out. That's crazy to Fuck. me. I still remember going to the Melbourne CBD to, for the launch of Halo 2. Massive event. Like, it was on radio here. Like, they were yeah, doing man, it was on huge. radio here for it. It was huge. And was we went down deal. into the CBD for the huge launch. I got the green controller from EB at the time, the clear green controller with my steel cop. I bought the steel edition and I bought a regular edition and I bought the controller. I just went nuts for Halo 2. And then I played it and I was like, uh, oh no. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this campaign. But I loved the multiplayer back then. Absolutely love the multiplayer. Yeah. Anyway, to celebrate, <laughs> NBC has asked Square Enix to make a turn-based JRPG all the party members are the six friends. Which class is each friend? Who's the main antagonist? The classes are Brawler, Swordsman, Tank, Healer, Mage, Archer. Well, the Mage is Phoebe. Yeah, yeah. The Mage is um, Phoebe. I feel the like Healer is Monica. The Archer should Monica. be Chandler because he's quite like, he he shoots with his with his wit. You know, yeah, quite the witty. Tank is Joey. Uh, the Swordsman is Rachel and the Brawler is Ross. That was easy. Yeah, I, I don't disagree That's with easy. any of your choices there. That was smart yeah. choices. I don't know anything about anything because I've never watched a full episode of the show and I never will. Why? It's the greatest TV show of all time. Because every time I've started watching it, I'm like, oh God, this is not funny. I don't like this. It's not for me. I'm glad other people do. And I move on with my life. Wow. Okay. It's the best, it's the best sitcom of all time. Z Black Rider and me. He has never seen Friends. There's, there's, we're out there. <sighs> I love friends. Should be locked up. I'm the type of person uh, who looks at, chats. looks at Seinfeld and goes, "This is pretty good," and then never thinks to watch it. Seinfeld's not bad. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't think Seinfeld. The way people talk I about like Seinfeld. Better. I think the problem, the thing with Seinfeld is, is because 
Seinfeld was really smart. Another person who can't act, but he self admit like he he says himself he knows he can't act. That's the whole thing of the show. Everyone around him, brilliant actors, but he's an atrocious actor. Um, because he's a stand up comedian, he's not an actor. The thing with Seinfeld is Seinfeld was partially very smart in the angle they took with how they marketed that show. It's a show about nothing. All these shows are about nothing. They all are. Friends is about nothing as well. But Seinfeld was really smart in that they marketed the show that way. It said it's a show about nothing. And they even did like a meta episode where they pitch the Seinfeld TV show. It's not called Seinfeld, but they pitch basically. It's, it's this fourth wall meta episode where they pitch to NBC or something a show about nothing and just the four of four people in an apartment and they're doing nothing and they're like, so the show's about nothing and they're like, yeah, it's a show about yeah, nothing. And then, and then the main That's, star dates a seventeen year old and everyone forgets about it over time. Oh really? I didn't. Yeah, hear about that. I think. Lundstein. I think. The, the thing about Seinfeld for me was like I've had loads of people say, "Oh, it's a great show. You should watch it if you like Friends." It blah, is. Blah, blah. Seinfeld's but good. Friends, Friends was part of my childhood, and like you, when I say go watch The Abyss, it's an incredible movie, and you go watch it, and you're like, "Eh, you didn't grow up on it. It's not nah. become part of your root." I couldn't go back. I've tried. I, I know. And I'm just like, nah, eh. Friends. Friends is different. I know people that have started watching Friends now and loved it. Even yeah, yeah, now. true. And I also know people who have gone and watched Friends for the first time now and gone, oh, my God, this is stupid. Yeah. So I know, I just think it connects with different people in a very different way, depending on maybe your upbringing or your views. I, I don't know. Because, again, Friends is a product of 94 to 2004. So you've got a lot of inappropriate jokes and there's a lot of, I would argue homophobia and there are things that they just couldn't do now because this was 94 to 2004. It was a very different time. So yeah, I, I understand most friends views, but anyway, um, it's still the greatest to come ever. Two super chats. Yes. Two super chats. Risk it for the biscuit to back Nick. I occasionally Uber and most kids are Xbox or PC, it seems to be a shift in Eagles 2018 and 2024. Um, yes, Risk It made a joke saying, oh, how do you know all these kids? It's like, <laughs> man, I've got a 12-year-old and an 8-year-old and uh, like all my cousins have kids and they're friends. And I'm actually shocked. Ari's, Ari's god brother, he's the one that I was talking about that was playing Fortnite at a weird ratio. And he's like, oh, but I want better FPS. And he plays on PC. He's like 12 years old. He has an Xbox Series S, but he's got a gaming PC, which is a laptop. His parents bought him a gaming laptop, so he plays Fortnite on that. He's like, I want better FPS. That's all he ever says. He's like, I want better FPS. <laughs> he's only like 12. <laughs> okay. Uh, Inked Al Chapo, who also has a podcast. P P the PNX, PNX podcast, I want to say it is. The PNX podcast. Uh, fun fact, they play the Friends theme song in my gym. <laughs> wow. I hate that song. The actual I'll song itself, like if I hear it on the radio, I switch the station. I actually don't like that song. I'm fine with it in its 10 second snippet on the show, but I actually hate that song. I never liked it. Okay. Uh, next question. Hugh. This week, I'd like to forfeit my question for Josh Stein's question. Uh, <laughs> this is great. This tweet had me fucking yeah, I saw cracking this. up. <laughs> I can't stop thinking. So, so the Fallout Twitter account posted more irradiated cowboy with no nose on the horizon in season two. And it's got a picture of the back of Walter Goggins. Uh, and then Stein replied, is he like the Xbox social media manager? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't stop thinking, if you kiss him, does your nose fit perfectly into his nose hole? <laughs> no, because his nose was CG'd away, mate. His nose is still there. Oh, you're a spoil sport with your realistic takes. Do you know, I would love I'm to I'm just have... doing a Jesse, so I don't know why Jesse rolled his eyes. I would love to you're have Stan on the show. Me. Do me better, Nick. Do me harder. No thanks. <laughs> would you guys like to have Stein on the show? I think he would be a great guest. Mm -hmm. He would not appear on our show. 
Oh, he might. He if we ask him, really he would, nicely, he would never appear on our show. If we tell him, Nick oh. won't be on. Maybe if you asked, he will not appear. If I ask, oh, well, sounds okay. like Nick's asked. There's no chance he'll appear if I ask. But you have a crack. Feel free. Okay, I'll have a crack. I'll ask. Feel free. I'd love to have Stein on. He looks. He sounds. He, he is just a really cool guy. Loves cheese. I'll tempt some cheese. I'll throw some cheese out. And I was a bit of string, and I'll be like, Stein, come here. Just like, yank the cheese. But yeah, that is a, that is a gross thought of your nose yes, fitting perfectly into his face. It is. <laughs> um, skedaddle. Like an OG patron. Like full OG. Like all the way from back in the days when we just used to flash up a picture of the patron, that there was like four of them. Yep. <laughs> that was like one of the first. We've come fun. a long way. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, so Xbox members can now get three months of Apple TV Plus. I am delighted, having never had a subscription before. Any recommendations for what must watch movies, shows, or documentaries? Oh mate, Apple Apple TV Plus's quality bar is so high. Outside like, of Argyle. Yeah. I got it wasn't that bad. I'm not it saying it's great. great. Don't sit there and say, oh, Nick loves it. I it wasn't really that enjoyed bad. It was okay. I really enjoyed Silo and I really Ted Lasso. enjoyed Ted, Ted Lasso and I really Ted enjoyed Lasso. Masters of the Air. Morning Wars. Uh, what is it? The Jacob one? Uh, something Jacob? Uh, shit. Something Jacob. Come on, man. Uh, the one with Chris Evans. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have Apple TV. Shit. Chris yeah, sorry, bro. Evans, Apple show. Defending Jacob. Defending Jacob. Fantastic. There's a a Godzilla. There's a Godzilla monarch. monster monarch legacy of monsters. That's not bad. Uh, Kurt Russell's in that. Um, there's in terms of Apple's movies, there's some really good ones. Oh, uh, the, 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 for Apple all was mankind. the first. Apple was the first streaming company, first streaming service to win an Oscar for Coda. They won yeah, Best yeah. Picture for Coda, which is a fantastic movie. Um, no, no, no. At, you you can't go wrong for almost anything on Apple. Apple's quality bar is extremely high. They're very very good. Pick just about anything. There's some not great stuff on there. Shyamalan has a show on there, which the first season was great. And then the second season was a bit... Eh. Um, For All Mankind, dude. Yeah. I love that show. For All Mankind is fucking awesome television. Um, and it's been renewed for season five. So, like, yay. Although, how old is Ed going to be at this point? Like, he's just a fucking husk stuck on Mars. I don't know. Um, but yes, there's there's a lot of great stuff on Apple TV. Like, I actually want to open my Apple TV app right now since I'm on a Mac. <laughs> you plebs. Are you um, going to read out more shows or do we just move on yeah, to the next question? Yeah, I feel like yeah, we've yeah. answered the question. I feel I'm like we've answered the question. Shows. Like, you don't need to read out more shows. He's okay. He's got good. No, nah, no. Nah, he wanted, he is an OG patron and I have loot. Time to move on. All right, John, start reading up the next one. Let he it go, Nick. Oh, he, he doesn't know. He has, he has no okay. idea. <laughs> he does now. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> severance. Like, Everyone goes on about severance. Even I love I'm severance. Not a it's great. Fan of severance. But Shrinking. let's let's move let's move on. Let's not Shrinking list all the TV is shows in the world. Fantastic with um Jason Siegel and Harrison Ford. Indiana Jones. Harrison Ford as well. <laughs> Shrinking is great. Oh. Yeah, come uh, on, Barry. Where's the Dorito Pope? Wrap it up. Ghosted. Ghosted is really good. Killers of the Flower Moon. Chat, help me. Yeah. Help me stop him. This is killing me. I love that the Dorito Pope covers Nick. Yeah, that's I'm awesome. answering the question. I'm answering We've answered the question. Come on. Come on. Okay. You can do this. Uh, Thanks, get out of here, John. 
If you take a look. Good old Collingwood. Uh, hello, John, Nick, and Jesse. So, I listened to John on Randall Thor and Jess's, Jez Corden's Xbox 2 Plus One podcast, where the second half of the podcast was devoted to what the future of Xbox would look like. It was a great listen. Congrats. Thank now, you. I'm going to refer to Brad Sams in his podcast of last week. He posed a question on X, Twitter, where he asked if he was Xbox and Microsoft gave him $100 million to invest, where should he invest it? Into a handheld device or into Game Pass? The overwhelming answer was Game Pass, more games. Now, I'm going back to your discussion on Xbox 2 Plus One. You talked a lot about hardware. You talked about uh, numbers and you talked about the market, but there was something I felt wasn't talked about much and that was the games. Jess did touch upon the unsustainability of the current model being followed by Sony, one of producing blockbuster games, but for little return. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pose uh, that question. What games going, what are games going to be like in this future? What will we be playing? And will it be a steady state model of not much change? Will it be something so unrecognizable we can barely predict it or something else? Uh, John, you also asked about a complete halo reboot how would you feel if they rebooted halo using the silver team timeline <laughs> i'd rather die um, I don't know on the, the second question tv is. show but the, the tv show timeline um, oh god no <laughs> um but yeah like you're right in that we probably didn't talk as much about the games but i think we did and we didn't in that i i think the future of gaming and we've seen it i think with some of the I think in general with Microsoft's approach to some of their games, and we're probably seeing it now with Hellblade 2 as an example, is instead of chasing this uh, bloated, ultra everything, 25 hours, 500 million, you know, you keep the team smaller and agile and you make more unique experiences that are more one and done, you know, eight hours. That's, that's, and that's probably not cost them as much to make as Spider-Man 2 or, or equivalent, right? Um, and I think with models like that, we're going to see more experimental stuff. Like if you were playing on PC right now, and I don't know if you have a PC, uh, Collingwood, but um, you often get those breakout hits that come out of nowhere and people are like, what is this? And suddenly it's huge, like Valheim, PUBG back in the day, DayZ. These oh, well. are the... Yeah, initially, well, Power came out on both, but you, you you get these experiments that the AAA studios and the big behemoths aren't going to take because it's too expensive to do. Um, whereas I think if we live in a world where the creators are more empowered to take those risks, we're going to end up <clears throat> with more interesting things to play. That's my general feel. Imagine um, if you took the sixty-seven billion. Spent no, on ABK I hate that sentence. And did two hundred Spider-Man. That's not how it works. Spider oh, okay. <laughs> That's not how it works. Weird video game pundit. That's not how it works. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's it was a good discussion. It was a privilege and an honor to be the first and only member of the Xbox Era podcast crew to be on the Xbox Two Plus One show. Um, and I appreciate Rand and Jez for reaching out and getting me on the show. It was a, it was an honor. Uh, and if you haven't listened to it, go listen to it. It's now available for everyone that isn't a patron uh, over on Jez's podcast channel, not Rand's. So go check it out. Um, Why do they do it that way? People always say, like, what about the games? Like, there's there's a bajillion friggin' games in Game Pass already. It's, it's already essentially, like, too much for most people to even keep up with. More won't hurt. Like, it won't hurt to have more options in there. It actually hurts to have more to buy because then it just makes it way harder for everyone to buy everything. Um like is it a hundred and I think a hundred million going into Game Pass is like not that much of its budget. It's right? not a lot. Yeah. It's not like a it's, lot. I mean, it, it's it can help hardware a lot more than it can help like, Game Pass. Uh, well it depends. A hundred million pumping into Game Pass would be a lot if the focus was smaller games and yeah. indies and stuff. If if a hundred million would like not do much in terms of like a big third party AAA launch or something like yeah. that. Like it, it there's an depends. interesting comment from youtube member magnum in the chat and i i think we used to say this right i want longer than eight hours if i'm spending my money i don't get free codes like you guys right and i think that's a very fair call out right when we when we started like you often get the impression that like 
people don't mention like we even see now like they'll talk about a game that's just released like there were multiple podcasts talking about Harold Halibut and how great it looks but none of them mentioned it was available for all of the Game Pass subscribers out there um, and there's often this complete lack of acknowledgement from games media that yeah we often get a load of this stuff for free we get the consoles for free we get the hardware for free we get the games for free and it doesn't talk about the expense to you the consumer and I think that's a completely fair call out um, and I agree with you in wanting more bang for your buck, right? If you're spending $70, you'll want more than eight hours gameplay. But then I would also say that they've taken that into account. They're not charging 70 for Hellblade 2. They're being very upfront about what it is. Um, but I just think as the, as, as the games industry now evolves in this new world, we're going to see kind of coming in over the next couple of years, you're going to get services like Game Pass where the the idea is, we're going to serve all of the niches we can. We're not just going to focus on the big cinematic blockbusters because there's more out there to gaming and there's more fans that can be generated that can discover genres through services like this than just the, the next over the shoulder cinematic whatever. Um, but I think it's an absolutely that. fair question. People like this. There's the short stuff out there and there's the cheap stuff out there, like the, the appropriately priced stuff out there, but people need to support it. Like ha everyone was raving about Prince of Persia and I yep. know it was a bit expensive for a 2D Metroidvania, but it was still not a full price $60, $70. And it's an and it easy, was, it's a game you can get 30 plus hours out of too. It wasn't short. I put like 30 <clears throat> into it, yeah. which is yeah. way longer than I needed to. Mm -hmm. and, and this is coming from Mr. Please Let Games Be Less Than 10 Hours. Um, and Prince of Persia was incredible. It's still my game of the year thus far. We're in April, and it's still my game of the year, Prince of Persia. But not enough people bought it. So it, there's a balancing act there. People can't complain about things, but then not support it when it's there. Like, yeah, that, there's also the element of, um, you know, like, okay... What 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 does value for money really mean? Are we talking just hours played? Because I went to see June two twice at the cinema. That's four hours or so, four and a half hours of visual enjoyment, but it cost me the equivalent of one AAA game, and that's all I got for it. Mm. Right? Mm. Like, do I view like Hellblade two coming? It's telling me it's eight hours. Like. It's probably six for most gamers, right? You know, they always up these numbers. They round them up or whatever for 50 quid or whatever it is for 39.99 over here. Do I consider that fair value? Well, it's equivalent to sitting down and watching June 2 twice. So maybe I do, but yeah, it's how much replayability is there? This is, this is all conundrums that are a very personal subjective thing. And are helped sort of a lot mind. by Game Pass. Yes. In an Ubisoft's case, you have Ubisoft Plus. Like, you can... The, the, there are nice. It's a nice thing to have the options to also make gaming cheaper by just being able to sub to a service, play whatever you want for that month, not be beholden to, you know, I spent 70 bucks, now I feel like I just have to beat this thing. Um, you can still rent with Gamefly for things that are physical, like... And wait on sale because most people are just wait, sale. Yeah. Nope. There's Nick's face on the boobs. Always my favorite part of that review of Immortality. <laughs> so good. But um. Don't. Yeah. Don't give in to the FOMO. Don't give in. Yeah, to the FOMO, FOMO is a big thing as well. But like with with wait. with multiplayer games, I can get the FOMO. But with single player, man, just wait. If if just money wait. is a genuine concern, just wait. Right. Wait it out. You'll live. Unless it's Nintendo, because their games don't really yeah, they'll go, go on down thirty three percent and never anymore. <laughs> they don't go on sale much, so that's sixty goes to different. forty, and that's about it. Yeah, it, luckily in Australia with Nintendo's games, they don't release expensive. Strangely, like w we seem to be the only country that doesn't cop super expensive Nintendo games at launch. Um, but yeah. The future is going to be very interesting. I feel like games as a certain, that, like I feel like we may be in this space where AAA might finally start to course correct and not yeah. be like bloated 100 hour things. We might start well, to go back to more even then, linear, like, shorter. You, you can get games like Bellatro that you can spend 110 hours in. Like you get a really good gameplay mm. loop in a certain genre. 
you can get a ridiculous amount of time. It's right. when things yeah. I'm saying, yeah, it's when the things are padded and you can tell they yes. are padded. Like, where it's like it's an open world game. We've made this mechanic and we're gonna stick it in a hundred places and we're gonna say, get all these Korok seeds type of thing. Like, yeah. That's right. There's a difference between a game that like I complain about long games, but I've put three thousand hours into Rocket League. There's a difference between a game that because Rocket League is technically a five minute game, matches are five minutes. <laughs> hey. but there's a difference. There's a difference between a game that up front says this is going to be a 50, 80, 100 hour game because of the open world, and there's a di- and and a game that you love so much that you keep going back to it and you wind up putting a hundred hours plus into it, like. I loved Alan Wake 2 so much. Everyone was like, oh, Alan Wake 2 is about 12 to 15 hours. I put 25 into it. And I don't normally play those sorts of games anymore because they're usually bloated, open world, whatever. But Alan Wake was linear. It was a bit more focused. It was. I, I loved Alan Wake 2. So there's a difference between asking you to play for 100 hours and... And um, a, uh, what's the word I'm after? There's a difference between asking you to play 100 hours and like luring you or attracting you to the point where you keep coming back yeah. to play for 100 hours. There's there's a difference. I don't, for some reason, I've gone blank on the word I'm after there. But yes, gaming will be very, very interesting. And it, it is funny because oh. I, we get those how long is a game kind of take like estimations from the press all the time and more it's like i go about half that and I'm like yeah I'm, I'm about half that most of the time uh, especially even with it, I'm not trying to mainline because I, I try to see enough to feel like i've seen what people are going to see when they play the game and even then like if you're if you're decent if you're focused on them a lot of times it's they're not super long unless it's like uncharted 4 and then it just feels like it's forever and i really like yeah. the uncharted series up until that point Mm-hmm. Um, now, this isn't really a question, Nick, but I would like you to read it out because he's the grand benefactor and like mm. what, whatever he says kind of goes, um, if you would be so kind. Where? What? Torn Raptor, last, last one before the last question from the wonderful Assassin Entertainment. What, 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 are you, what am I reading? Torn Raptor's response. I can read it if you like. What? Where am I? So, what, oh, there, the... there, 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 there. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Torn Raptor. Have the reboot to Halo that? Yeah. Have the reboot to Halo be like the original Fable where you start as a kid. John Presley snatched. You play as him as he survives his training and the torture dished out to him. Build him into what we old folks know to be Master Chief. <laughs> That's a <laughs> reboot and a half. That's one that, way to do it. It would be tough to get <laughs> kid torture through. The yeah, can we sign that one off? <laughs> but I would have loved if the show started there. Yeah, I, I would have loved... No, it would, have, it would have been great. Show show starts off, Master Chief, blue team, in space. Pre- he's like, he's taking it. I love it. Just fish him straight away. I would have loved uh, it if they had started with how we how John became John. No, no, no. Think about it. Starts off, the reach is under attack. It's all crazy. And you as the viewer are like, what's going on? Massive space battles, ships blowing up, people screaming, people dying. And then the Chief's like, yeah, I'm going to go take out this space station. And they do something that does the callback. Like, you know, the thing where they go, Ollie Oxen free, and they go... You know, they do that little signal in the books Mm. and then it flashes back to them as kids and that's how we start our first episode. And then we constantly keep building to that reach. There's a hundred ways they could have done it better. Yeah, I know, I know. I love it. I love it. Jess, Jesse, 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 it's over, Jesse. It's over, you can come back. Even though reach, even though reach. Oh no, it's not over. It's not over. I have every excuse for the Halo show. I just don't care about people giving an opinion where they think they know how to make a show. I don't. I just don't Even care about that. Even though Reach, as a Halo game, wasn't the greatest, that ending, and the the ending to Halo Reach was fantastic, and that that tug at the nostalgia strings where you know that's where Halo CE starts. Like that's we see Halo CE in the distance. Yeah, that is cool, and it would have been nice to have had something like that in the show. You know what I mean? I, it just. Also, Halo fans like hated what that. Reach did to the story. We did. It, it retconned the book, which a lot of people really liked. Yep. 
big shame. I'm just talking about the ending of Reach. I specific. I mm. said myself that I don't know if Halo Reach was the greatest Halo game, but I love the ending to it. I, I just said that. But, yeah. but in the end, everyone uh, can just admit it was an extremely successful show for Paramount, so you're stuck with it. Tough shit. Unless Paramount gets bought and they don't want to redo it. Then in 20 years, maybe you get a reboot. Sony does, can you imagine if Sony does buy Paramount and they're like, get rid of that? I the think Halo they're show. a part of a group <laughs> looking, because I don't think Sony has like the money, but they, they're a part of a group looking to do it. They're backed by another investor, apparently, according to yeah. the rumor mill, but yeah. It's the uh, last rumor. question. I'd make, I'd make such a good Halo show. <laughs> so would I. I'd be brilliant. I'd make such a good Halo My Halo mm. show would be the fucking biggest thing on the planet. If I was the showrunner for Halo, like Halo fans mate. could rest easy. I'd, oh, I'd, mate. I'd make Halo everything. Fans let me and John, John and I, let John easy. and I be the showrunners. We'd fucking make the best fucking Halo TV show you've ever seen in your life. See, this is when you go, it's too obvious. you got to dial it back. So it would be dial so back. good that Sony would shut down PlayStation. They'd be like, we can't compete with this. John yeah, pretended yeah. that Halo fans could be happy. That's how you know that it's pretend. <laughs> I honestly I think I can make them genuinely like so pleased. But anyway, it's the last community question from executive yeah. producer at Assassin executive Entertainment. Producer. Assassin Entertainment. Hello, John, Jesse, and Nick. Keanu Reeves is show. Honestly, was not expecting that, but now I can't stop hearing it. Whoa. My Whoa. question is with how much Xbox has in store in terms of announcements, when do you think we will begin to see them? This month or next? Thank you guys for all the hard work you do. Um, Thank you, John I and Jesse. The showcase, I, th- I think the showcase will be probably when we start to actually. Yeah, there'll be a lot at the showcase. Yeah. I think this year probably the showcase, and and my guess is that we'll probably start to hear updates on stuff we have not heard from in a while. Perfect. Yeah, like perfect perfect nice. They're guessing, by the way, internet community. Yes. Is- this is guessing. Uh, no, I'd love, um, yeah, I'd love for the June showcase to have hands on. I thought Perfect Dark was rumored. Is it rumored? I we had... Yeah. I well, I you, you would expect it after all this time. We'd see something just well, like yeah, we saw yeah, Fable last year. Yeah. Didn't we first see a trailer for Perfect Dark in fucking 2019? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think yeah. it actually even been started working on then, though. Yeah. No, it was obviously a, like yeah. a, a recruitment trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think they would ooh, be at a point to on. show. It, it would be cool oh, if they're at a point to show stuff. What? Uh, okay. There might be a room member for next week. All right. I'll get some clarification. I'll get some clarification, but there might be a room member for next week. Sign me up. Um, it's too late for now, but I'll, I've got to ask someone some questions, but there might be a room member for next week. Just talking like, about showcase time and stuff, it reminded me of something I got a DM about. I think for the showcase as well, considering we've got, uh, Indiana Jones coming out later this year. Yep. Hellblade would have already been out by the time the showcase rolls yep. around. So, like, I'm I'm hoping for some hands-on time with Indiana Jones, like, and to be able to, like, because technically right now that we're still trying to figure it all out, and I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. You know, I'm going to be hopefully heading out to LA to be a part of Summer Games Fest, and if there is that there, like, I'll obviously do my best to to do all of that um but yeah like i think we're going to start to if from what microsoft was saying they've done a lot of the legwork to integrate activision blizzard and june is really their opportunity to just absolutely lay the smack down and if you think back to previous microsoft efforts they normally do like some pre-announcements the week before where they'll come out with some cool stuff like i wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me like here's a load of games you know but do they save the event of here's every Call of Duty is available on Game Pass? Click now. They'd probably save that for the show, you know, stuff like that. Mm. Um, but I'm intrigued to see what the, the rest of the year has in store. And it's nuts to me that it's almost May already. Like, Jesus. Also, mm. I've only got th- less than 30 days of my 30s left. And I'm very sad about this. Um, yeah. But good like question. That. Assassin. I, I don't like it, mate. I don't want to get old. I'm 44 in a couple of months. Yeah, but you look 34, bro. 20. I look 54. Gone, <laughs> Do you know what I've I mean? I've so grey in the last couple of years doing all this. I, I wonder why, what the reason could be that I've, my hair has all gone grey. You know, I've got Twitter open here. Gene Park retweeted this thing from an account called Gaga Doing Things. 
and it's a video of Lady Gaga performing at Lollapalooza in 2007, and she's wearing basically no clothes. Yeah, she okay. doesn't that often. Um, it's worth mentioning, Hugh, uh, in the chat, Hellblade 2 will hopefully appear at the Game Awards for the thousandth time to actually win an award. Hmm. What was that? Hellblade 2 year, will appear at the yeah. Game Awards this year to hopefully win an award. I, I oh, doubt it'll even graphical be or tech, it'll be it'll be nominated on the graphical technical stuff at the very least because it's gonna look so good. They gave they gave a freaking nomination to Starfield. Like they'll 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 give that to Hellblade most likely. It, it, it is very way. funny. People always flipping out Hellblade for technical achievements. Yeah, even at GDC and and everything, it got nominated there because it's a technical achievement. You might not like the load screens or the way they do camera work, but the actual or thirty. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's be the thirty. The thirty, I don't think Des would care about because I understand it's because of the CPU side of things, where you know the consoles just aren't going to be that great because they're only five hundred bucks. But um, <clears throat> anyway, an Xbox game won't be very good. I'll I'll keep repeating that an Xbox game will never win Game of the Year at the Game Awards, and a so multi-plat Xbox game could win if it's multi-plat yeah, because right it's at the start. Multi- yeah, because it's multi-plat. But Whoa. yes, an Xbox exclusive ain't winning Game of the Year. It's just never going to happen. Not not while Jeff runs the show. This is never going to happen. Well, it's not even. I mean, well, doesn't, you know. he doesn't vote or anything. It's it's it is the people who who do all this stuff that you know you call out all the maybe, time that are the nominators. Maybe this year, Jeff will extend the invite to be a part of the voting panel for the Game Awards <laughs> to this wonderful team here yeah, at Xbox okay. Era. No. Right? Yeah, sure. Right? Hey, <laughs> and I'd still, I'd still end up voting for a Nintendo game. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Which one? <laughs> so this true. Is, this is like one of the only years I don't know what it would even be. Princess Peach? Next year you'll have stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for Nintendo, there's nothing. I don't know what I'm going to spend my last coupon on. I still have a coupon that I have to use by June, and I don't think there's anything coming out by June. I'm get see if, uh, see uh, if the are grounded. I'm going to have to get an old game that I have physical and just get it digital and get rid of the cart. That's probably my only option between now and June for Nintendo. But wow. as um, much as they tease Jeff, we love him because they've been very nice to us about Summer Game Fest so far. So thank yeah, you. they have. Um... Speaking said of no, Nick. S- s- Summer Games Fest and everything else, um, before we wrap up the show tonight, we just wanted to let everybody know of a plan that we have formulating. So um, we know that uh, with plans to take Xbox Era to Summer Games Fest, to take the whole team to Gamescom, um, we're going to be starting up some some efforts to try and Frankly, fundraise as much as we possibly can because <laughs> shit's expensive, you know. Um, so one of the things that we're looking to do, and we're going to be working on the organisation of it to to hold it within, you know, probably at some point in May, um, will be a, a couple of things. One, we'll be doing a subathon, so we're talking probably twenty four hours of streaming uh, between as many of the Xbox era crew as we can get on, be it for multiplayer, you know. Um, co-streams co-op community everything uh to just try and get as many people as we can interested in in supporting xbox here in the team and we'll be doing that by supporting a shit ton of awesome video game giveaways throughout that subathon um i'd have more if and, didn't it would stop asking for stuff my well, god this yeah. man he is who he is <laughs> um and in addition we'll probably be putting up some sort of um assistance like via a GoFundMe or something to that equivalent to help get the team out there uh because the costs are absolutely crazy and we Especially are very for very this small son of a gun right here so far away <laughs> from everything <laughs> we need we need yeah. a matter transporter for nick or like a we're, we're going to invest it all generator. into teleportation technology to get nick out um but we we are looking forward to doing as much coverage and and bringing you guys closer to the games and stuff that you want to see and that you love in the best way that we can um you know getting the best footage together making the best kind of videos uh, and just basically just investing everything we can into giving you guys more um so a lot of our focus over the coming months will be on our patreon and youtube members patreon in particular because it's it's far easier to give stuff on that um so yeah, if you love what we do, 
patreon.com forward slash xbox zero we we love you guys for all the support we get so you know please don't ever think for a second despite the jokes about how much i hate all of our patrons um we could not be where we are you would not be able to pay your mortgage absolutely true i would be homeless and in a really dire spot because it's a big gamble um quitting a decent career in uh, in the SaaS industry to do this. So you know, I had like, a thoroughly <laughs> mediocre career in IT work in building websites that I quit for yeah. this. So, you know, we love that you believe in us enough to help us make it happen. Um, and the, the more that we grow, the more we can bring more of the team in and we'll have to make Nick do, you know, work. Um, I'll do work. If this was my full time <laughs> job, I would do work. I would. I would do work. I know you would. I know you would. You get it. It's it's you wouldn't believe the amount of really boring stuff that we have to do now um, outside of the really fun stuff. So um, it all works and we, we owe you guys so much. So thank you. Um, I think that brings us to the end of this episode. Yeah, I mean, we won't see and you next unusually, week. Unusually. Yes, that's a good call out. Thank you. I won't be here next week. Um, and f funnily enough, I think I might not be here the week after as well, but I, I will double check on that. I won't be here next week because it's my son's 10th birthday. And instead of asking for presents or stuff he doesn't need, uh, in a rare tear jerking moment, he asked, can I just spend time with you, dad? So we are spending the day in London answer. together. We're staying in a hotel up in London. That's what he wants for his birthday. He wants to watch Jaws in the evening. And like and and the only thing I've said is whatever birthday money he gets, we're going to go to Hamley's in Regent Street, massive toy store in London, and he can just get whatever he wants with his birthday money, and I won't stop him from wasting it. If he wants to buy some of those stupid eggs that are just full of crap, that's his call. It's his birthday. You're not allowed um, to miss two weeks in a row because your your birthday is in a month, and we know you, and you probably won't be here for your birthday. So uh, my birthday is on Sunday, so I will be doing the podcast on the Saturday night, mm. and it will be my birthday. So we'll I'll be see. there for that. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, and my daughter's birthday is like, not, it's on a Tuesday. So we're all good. Um, but yeah, so no me next week, but uh, maybe we could reach out to the wonderful Kay Asante or another guest to come in and, and fill the third spot in my stead. Um, until then, anything else you guys want to say before we wrap things up? A lot of content coming this um, week. Too much. We got, oh, yeah, you know, there's four, at least four reviews, probably more text ones coming. Um, and then it does die for a little bit, but there's a lot coming, and it's coming mostly very early in the week. Fun I can't times. stop staring at this Lady Gaga video. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> on that if note. Gene Park, if you follow Gene Park, go check him out on Twitter and check his retweets. I can't stop Should staring I pull it up at this Lady Gaga video. No, uh, let's no. not. No. Uh, no. Thank you for watching, everyone. Man. Be good to each other. Have a great weekend playing games into tomorrow. I can see Kay is in the chat. He's on standby. Yeah, he's, he's not, he was earlier. He was earlier. He's on standby for, for next week. It's a bummer because I really like it when Kay's on the show and I hate like not being here when he is. But what can I do? What can I do? Um, it is what it is. Much love, everybody. Be good. Stay safe. Play video games. Uh, keep an eye on the website for all of the latest reviews dropping early this week and uh, tomorrow. And uh, we'll see you then. Ciao for now. Ciao for now.